Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend, Parallel Deku, back with another fanfiction. This is the movie of, What If Deku Met Mysterious Spirit? Now before starting, please give this video a like, and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. Jump off the roof and hope for a quirk in the next life. Those words hurt, a lot. It was the final push to Izuku Midoriya after years of pushing his emotions to a breaking point. He was born quirkless in a world where pretty much everyone had quirks. A world where everyone has a superpower, but him it sucked. What made it worse was everyone bullying him. Treating him like his quirklessness made him dirt. Less than dirt actually. It was worse when he didn't even have the second joint in his pinky toe that signifies quirklessness. So he should have won but he didn't. He got bullied for years because of this and today was the day it finally just all hit him harder than usual. Especially with those words. Jump off the roof and hope for a quirk in the next life. Who says that? In this case it was someone who used to be Izuku's best friend. He used to meaning once his old best friend, Katsuki Bakugo. Got his amazing quirk he treated Izuku like everyone else did. Scratch that, he treated Izuku worse. Like hello. He told Izuku to just jump off the roof of their middle school and kill himself. After years of bullying though Izuku was pushed to it. He was actually on the roof. He didn't even bother to go pick up the journal of his Katsuki had blew up with his quirk that let him make explosions with his hands. It didn't matter, because Izuku was about to jump off a roof and let himself die. It wasn't a pleasant feeling though. He had always wanted to be a hero, like the pro heroes that had become a norm since quirk showed up. He was quirkless so it's not like that matters. He was a skinny wimp who was about to die so maybe he should think about something else. No, he should just do it. Stop stalling. So Izuku did. He jumped, and immediately regret it. The feeling of falling, seeing the ground get closer, time deciding to slow, his sad life flashing before his eyes. He hated all of it. He didn't want to die. He then hit the ground. Everything was black, but then it was like a single light appeared in front of Izuku, a gray-blue light in the shape of a person. He could only see the person, and they gained more detail and he saw clearly who they were. A girl, more specifically a girl his age, who was really cute. This cute girl had chin length, pale gray hair, parted to the right, hanging down over her eye and obscuring the majority of the left side of her face. She had dark bags under her blue eyes, and a small mouth with full lips. She had a completely blank look on her face, the only trace of any emotion being the smallest amount of sadness in her eyes. Izuku couldn't blame the look because he could actually feel that his entire body was just a mess. His neck, arms and legs all were bent in the wrong direction, different directions from each other. It was painful but for some reason not as painful to Izuku as it should be. Maybe this was the afterlife. So he was dead. Wow Izuku really hit his head with this landing. Of course he was dead. He just jumped off of a building. All of this afterlife was only the span of a second. His mind was just going a mile a minute. Maybe he should ask this girl what was happening. Before he could speak she did. Rise my hero. Wow. Even her voice was cute. She tapped his forehead as she said that and Izuku felt something like being yanked back with either fiber of his being. Then everything went black again. The grass in Izuku's face and an inhale of breath made him snap his eyes open. The teen with emerald hair jumped up in shock at what happened, looking around for the cute girl. He didn't see her anywhere around the front side of his middle school. Then he noticed a blaring important detail of the moment. He was standing, with perfectly good legs, after he had just broke them jumping off of a roof. That was his intelligent response to the situation as he looked at his arms, which were also in perfect condition. It was very startling to him. His clothes were kind of ruined like it did happen, his uniform having ripped in multiple places. A small amount of his was actually on his clothes by the rips. There was also some on the ground where he fell. That was all the proof that proved he had indeed jumped, but he was spotless physically with no marks of any kind. What just happened? Was that his quirk? Was that girl responsible? Did she heal him? Was she like some spirit who felt bad for him and revived him? Why? She called him her hero. When did he become a hero? Did he just get picked by a goddess to be her champion? Was he thinking too hard on this? Probably. Izuku actually didn't know what to do now. What should he do now? He just tried to end his life. Now he has a second chance. He has to not waste this. He now was going to try even harder to be a hero. He got his second chance and with it he had a supporter, that girl. If anything he was sure that was his guardian angel, and he couldn't disappoint her. With that he started to walk home. He would go home, crack down on his study, do something about his weak frame, and become a hero. That was astoundingly tough and that quirk once you become a hero please come to my agency. What bravery. Young man you held your own against that villain admirably and well. I'm glad you are alright. You have well kid. That's the stuff of pros right there. So many people were saying things. But it all fell on deaf ears. Katsuki Bakugo was just sitting there. Not moving an inch. He couldn't be blamed for his lack of actions in that moment. He almost just died. A villain made of some ing purple sludge stuff just tried to take over his body. No one could even help Katsuki in that moment. 
none of them other thinking of something to do or actually not being able to help. He was helpless, up until All Might, one of the best pro heroes ever, showed up and took down the sludge villain with a single punch. He arrived right before Katsuki died, but not quick enough to prevent Katsuki's life from flashing before his eyes. The experience made Katsuki think of a few things hard, but they were all really one thought that was so big it spiraled into multiple thoughts, making him numb to everyone and everything around him as it stood there in his head. Katsuki was a, that was it, Katsuki was a, an asshole, honest s, a horrible and arrogant jerk especially because of that memory, one that happened not even 20 minutes ago. Words he said to someone who used to be Katsuki's best friend before Katsuki became insufferable. Jump off the roof and hope for a quirk in the next life. Seriously, what the hell was wrong with him? Katsuki can't believe he felt no regret at all when he said those words to a kid he had bullied nonstop for the past 10 years. He was that much of a that he honestly told another kid to kill themselves over something they couldn't control. Again Katsuki was a... He deserved the sludge villain attacking him honestly. Katsuki wanted to be a hero, someone who was the best at it, who could save anyone. And he told someone to kill himself. He really deserved to get attacked by that sludge villain. To Katsuki it didn't feel like enough. He had to go apologize. To every single person he was a massive jerk to, especially Izuku. Ignoring every single person there he stood up and walked out of the alley. Kid wait someone unimportant at that moment tried to stop Katsuki. Off Katsuki shouted without stopping his pace. He would have to fix that. But first he had to apologize to Izuku, who was probably still at the school, trying to find his journal that Katsuki threw out a window like a. Katsuki got to the school and didn't see Izuku at all. Maybe he found the journal already and left. Or did Izuku just go straight home after being harassed by Katsuki? If that was the case then he had to do the right thing and find Izuku's journal and take it back to him. Looking up to figure out where their class was Katsuki sighed, realizing he threw it in the pond in front of the school. I'm such a hang. Katsuki gained a scowl as he mumbled those words, wading into the pond to grab the journal. Small fish in the pond apparently thought it was food and had been slowly eating away at it until he picked it up. The journal was in terrible condition, making the blonde teen feel worse. He flapped it slightly to get the fish who wanted to read in some water off of it before turning to get out of the pond. Then he saw it. It barely caught his eye but it did just enough for it to be hard to ignore. The shining red liquid not that far away from the pond. Katsuki actually felt panic for some reason. Why was there? The ground and the grass also looked matted as Katsuki moved to investigate. Matted in the shape of a person almost, like someone hit the ground. Hard. Katsuki looked up at the roof of the building, the one that he had told Izuku to jump off of. Oh god did Izuku actually get pushed hard enough to do it? Did Katsuki actually cause his suicide? Is that why Izuku never got his journal from the pond? Please still be alive. Katsuki said in a panic as he walked at a fast pace towards where he knows Izuku lives. Izuku actually stopped part way home. He sat down at a bench and thought of an important detail. What was he going to tell his mom? He had to tell her he might have found his quirk, or a blessing from a goddess. But she will obviously ask what kind of blessing and how and she will find out he actually tried to end his life. That would crush his mom. He didn't want her to feel like she failed as a mother because she didn't. She tries her hardest despite his dad leaving and it being just her raising Izuku. She deserved to know he found what could very well be his power. But he couldn't just tell her how. This thinking actually brought up another thought. Was this a one-time deal? Was that the only time the goddess would revive him? It would make sense. Wait was he resurrected with an actual power? He checked himself again and noticed while aiming his gaze on his left wrist something he knew he didn't before. A bracer-like thing that was completely molded to the upper half portion of his forearm right up to his wrist. It was made of some type of metal that looked close to silver in color, but on the outside of his forearm it had a dark blue gem. The gem seemed dull however, like it was missing a light or something. How did it get on him? Was it placed there by the goddess? Izuku tried to take it off, but it didn't move. He struggled with it for a minute before he stopped. It didn't move at all, not even a millimeter, almost like it was now a part of him. It definitely had to be from the goddess. He looked to see if the wristband, or was it a bracer, had anything else to it but it didn't. It looked plain past the dull gemstone. Kid are you okay? A man asked in concern, worried about Izuku because of his clothing's condition. Izuku immediately panicked, his natural reaction to anything. Do I am fine I just fell he tripped over his words trying to explain what happened. Okay. The man gave Izuku an odd look before he left. Izuku did seem to not have any bruises to the guy's knowledge so he must have just scrapped his clothes. Oh man I need to learn to talk smoother. Izuku mumbled to himself. He sat there for a minute longer, trying to think properly what he was going to tell his mother. He finally decided after a minute. He would tell her everything. Katsuki knocked slightly panicked on the door to the Midoriya's apartment, praying to God the entire time that it would be Izuku that opens the door. Someone opened the door, and it wasn't Izuku. 
It was in Ko Midoriya, the small mother of the kid he hoped wasn't dead. It didn't help his fears that she looked like she was in the middle of crying. I'm sorry Beck Hugo. The woman sniffed. I just got some bad news. No, no, no 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 no. Not bad news. Not that news. God why? He made Izuku kill himself. Katsuki dropped the journal as he felt himself just die inside. He looked down at the floor, clutching his fists as he struggled to keep the tears from appearing. I'm so sorry. He quickly left. He didn't deserve to be around her. He made her son kill himself. The only person she had after her husband left her. He was the reason she was alone now. Katsuki was an asshole. A few minutes later Izuku came home. He was confused how his journal ended up in front of his apartment door, but shrugged it off as not being the weirdest thing that day. He picked up the ruined notebook and entered his apartment. Mom I'm home the teen called out as he closed the door. He heard her try to hide her crying. Mom, hi sweetie and Ko said as Izuku entered the main area of the apartment. She looked like she had obviously been crying. Mom what happened? Izuku asked with concern. It's just I got fired. And Ko didn't mind her job as much as the fact that it was the only way the two had anything. Izuku's father was no help, abandoning them, and she didn't have a job that could do more than have them living paycheck to paycheck. Izuku frowned, that wasn't good at all. Aldera Junior High, where he was enrolled, was pretty expensive to their budget. He knew what he should definitely do. Mom I am dropping out of school. Inko gave him a bewildered look. Izu know I can find something else. It just means there might not be food sometimes. Mom I can help. Izuku shook his head. Aldera isn't good anyways. Maybe he could tell her he got bullet hard there to get her to agree. Honey but what about your education? I can take online courses Izuku realized he forgot that was a thing. Webcam find something good that costs little and use the spare money to bite us over until we both get jobs. Inko looked down. Honey what about your future? I am still going to UA. Izuku declared. I sent in a request and actually have the spot in the entrance exams. I can make sure I am ready to go there and will definitely get in Izuku then got another idea. We can sell scrap metal too. Scrap metal. Inko wondered what her son was talking about. The beach. I think the area is called Dagaba Municipal Beach Park. It is overflowing with metal and junk. I can take some stuff from it and sell it to people. In Ko sighed. She didn't know why she was here panicking so much when she should have known Izuku would try to find a way to help. He was a good kid. I suppose I could let you move to online classes. But I don't want you to fall behind. I promise I won't mom. The teen nodded. He then wondered if he should tell her everything then, or wait till later. No, not later, it would be worse later. He should just tell her now and hope she takes it well. So he did. Izuku sat there and told her about the bullying, thinking it would be best to start with that and build up to his discovery earlier that day. He told her about every rude name, insult, punch, smack, kick and every other piece of abuse he got in his bullying. It wasn't received well by Enko, who began to weep thinking she failed as a mother. Izuku assured her it wasn't anything to do with her and how it was mostly people like Katsuki who were the real problem. Izuku slowly built up to the moment on the roof, and Ko having lost her depressed mood for an angry one when she heard what Katsuki told Izuku earlier that day. Izuku took a pause before he said anything about the roof, hesitant to tell his mom he tried to take his own life. Izu and Ko saw Izuku's facial expression, one of confusion as he struggled to find the words. What is it? Izuku's eyes began to well up. I listened to him. He felt so guilty telling her that. I listened and I jumped off the roof of Aldera. And Ko gained a sad look. She hugged her son tightly. At least you are here safely. Izuku realized he would have to explain it better. Mom I actually died. And Ko became confused. Honey you are standing right in front of me. Mom I seriously died Izuku didn't blame her for not believing him. I died. I broke my arms and legs and even my neck I saw this beautiful goddess and she just tapped my head and I was all fixed Izuku then pointed at his clothes. Look at my clothes they are so ruined from the jump but I don't have a scratch on me then he showed his left wrist with the unmovable band. This has been on my wrist since and I can't move it. Inko looked at her son with doubt. No one would not die from something like that. But at the same time it was hard to believe Izuku survived death. However Izuku was known for being a terrible liar and what he said sounds like it had truth to it. Was it possible that his quirk that never surfaced was the ability to cheat death? That would explain why they never knew because he never had something threaten his life before. Izu if that is your quirk. Please try not to use it too much. And Ko really didn't know how she would handle it if his quirk was cheating death and he exploited it. I think it was just a goddess. Izuku admitted. She tapped my head and said rise my hero and I was suddenly okay. I think she made me her champion or something. Izuku felt like this whole thing was was an unbelievable. Luckily his mom knew him and trusted him. I am glad this goddess chose you. And Ko really found it weird but Izuku had no reason to make this weird of a lie. Next thing tomorrow I swear I will get some scrap metal from the beach and find out how much it is worth to help us budget. Izuku swapped subjects. I can do some classes at the beach with my laptop also. I believe in you honey. 
Katsuki didn't even go home at first. He walked through the small walkways between the multiple apartment buildings that made the area he lived in that the Midorias lived on the other side of. He stopped in a small central fountain area and stared at the fountain. Izuku was dead. It was his fault. He didn't deserve to be a hero. Izuku did. He had no quirk and was just a guy trying to be nice, and everyone else treat him like dirt because of the quirk Izuku never got, and fate decided to instead give a quirk-like explosion to Katsuki, an arrogant shit who let others inflate his ego and become an insufferable person, someone who thought he would be the best hero, but he drove someone kind to suicide. Heroes don't do that. Villains do. Katsuki was the villain here. Katsuki slammed his right fist into the cement of the fountain with force through his rage and hatred at himself. He felt a crack in one of his knuckles. He didn't care. He deserved it. He was a villain. He had to be a hero now. For Izuku. So many people all were like Katsuki and took what it meant to be a hero for granted. Them all being in it for the glory or the fame, or to inflate their own ego. Mount Izuku. He was the closest person Katsuki knew to a hero. The blonde made a vow right then and there. Leaning over the edge of the fountain with his now bleeding hand. He would be a hero. A true hero. One like Izuku. To honor the guy who deserved more than anyone to be able to be one. The next day Izuku was already in online school. The Midori is working fast and finding an online school that was way cheaper than Aldera and actually had a better curriculum. Izuku had taken his laptop with him to Dagaba Beach and scoped out all the metal. His first impression of it. Trash the entire beach was just trash. That was perfect. More metal equals more scrap to sell. More scrap to sell equals more money to support his mom. More money to support his mom was the goal. Heck he could actually clean the whole beach two heroes should do things like this also, set an example of being a decent person. He had so many benefits to this too. Money to support his mom. He could train physically here with all the heavy metal. The signal was good here surprisingly so he can study for school here too. This was perfect Izuku spent the majority of the morning and up until mid-evening moving metal, sorting through the crap so he can organize it better. He figured he could find a way to transport it all later, but organize it all to make it easier when he found people to buy it. It was some hard work. His whole body was getting tired from all the heavy lifting but Izuku didn't stop at all. He saw it as a good way to push his grit, something he admit he needed more of. Around the afternoon, a bit after school would have finished that day, two things happened almost simultaneously. Izuku was standing near the top of a pile of metal. It was a big pile, and he had to focus to not fall down and definitely hurt himself. He was trying to sift through some of the top parts for anything interesting when the wristband which was near his face since the leverage he had with his left arm was just above him, began to glow. Specifically the gem did. It went from dull dark blue to a vibrant icy blue. The light scared him but the other thing scared him more. Young man what are you doing? A voice said from the side. Izuku jumped, not knowing anyone was near him. The sudden movement from his startle made the metal he was holding as leverage become loose and he fell as a result. Falling backward he felt his head fall on a sharp piece of metal that sliced through the back of his head. Everything went black after that. Katsuki went to school that day quietly. Everyone had seen the news and assumed it was because of his encounter with the sludge villain. It wasn't. He was quiet because of Izuku. He looked to the seat that Izuku used to have, one behind him and to the right. It felt wrong seeing that seat empty, especially when Katsuki was directly responsible for the missing kid. Classes went on that day and nothing happened. Nothing, not even a damning thing. Of course he was only referring to Izuku. Everyone wouldn't shut the up about his encounter with the sludge villain. Up until he would tell them all to shut the up of course. But not a damn person even said anything about Izuku. For us sake the teacher even skipped over his name and attendance. Did they really just not care? Was he the only one aware of Izuku being in dead? Someone had to also, who removed his body from the grass. Did no one really care because Izuku was quirkless? Why was he surprised? Katsuki was the biggest asshole to Izuku. He was a for 10 years. Mistreating Izuku because he was quirkless, of course others did. But then again, he was the worst one. So if he had this moment that made him realize he was a why didn't the others even just notice Izuku? Sure he had a life-changing event but he was literally the worst. Everyone else should have something mild life event make them realize they were also assholes. He felt that being at Aldera was a waste of time now. He had to get to UA. Not to be the number one hero just because but to be the hero Izuku would have been. However he had 10 more months until the entrance exams. And he doubt he could get in on early access. So until then he was going to train hard. Not just his quirk or his strength, but his whole attitude. He couldn't be or angry all the time anymore. He would use this time to fix his problems and be a better person. Izuku was in the weird place again. Everything was black but the cute goddess was back. She didn't have the sad look in her eyes and it was completely blank. 
Maybe she was upset the first time because it was a suicide attempt and this time was kind of just stupid. He got scared and fell into a pile of trash. That was kind of really stupid. Wait was her blank look because she thought he was stupid? Who are you? Izuku asked, ignoring the wet feeling on the back of his head that was definitely. Rise my hero. She repeated what she said the day before, tapping him on the forehead as well. He felt the pulling sensation again and everything went black again. My boy, are you okay? A man was slapping Izuku's face repeatedly and lightly, trying to wake him. Wah. Izuku opened his eyes, not really paying attention to who the man was. You fell from the trash my boy. That looks like a nasty fall. Yay it was killer. Izuku rubbed the back of his head, feeling the but not a wound. It was completely healed again. That is a bit of. The man said, I need to get you to a hospital. Izuku shook his head. He had a goddess's blessing. He didn't need a hospital at that moment he was fairly certain. I have a um was this technically his quirk? It could be a quirk that connected him to the goddess. Your quirk young lad. The man asked. Izuku finally looked at the man who was speaking and fell over right out of the man's hold. The man had been carrying Izuku towards a hospital, but they were just at the edge of the beach. All Migage T. It was indeed All Might, but in civilian clothes consisting of dark green paints and a white shirt. The massive man had his signature grin on his face as he was looking at the team. Yes it is I. Omigosh Omigosh Izuku admittedly hit fanboy mode. Young lad calm down. All Might responded to the team. You just fell and banged your head pretty hard. I'm actually fine All Might Sir Izuku saluted and he felt like a dork doing it. Young lad I can see you're. All Might then pointed to his large arm and the left side of his, which were covered with some. You are bleeding from a head injury. I'm actually fine Izuku squeaked. He out his hand against his head again to confirm that the wound was gone and showed his hand to All Might, his hand covered with. See, okay. All Might had a flat expression. Young lad that is more. The wound is gone. I have a goddess's blessing the teen still defended himself in being fine. He didn't want to make All Might waste time on him. A what? The pro hero was beginning to think this kid hit his head really hard. Izuku realized how weird it probably sounded to say he had a goddess's blessing like that. People will begin to think he is just crazy. I am have a quirk. This quirk healed you then. All Might asked. Yep. I have no wound Izuku stated. Forgive me for wanting to make sure. All Might then checked for himself, seeing that there was in fact no wound at all. That is an impressive quirk you have there. Thanks All Might Izuku had stars for eyes. I still would like to know why you are on this beach. You look like you have been here all day and not at school. Though, I take online classes. I um want to get to UA. So I figured I should train hard. That beach is a good place to train since it has trash that is tough to move around and I can also clean the beach while I train. Izuku left out him going there for the scrap metal to take and sell to keep him and his mom from starving and homelessness. All Might gained a grin. That is fine reasoning young lad. He put a hand on Izuku's shoulder. You seem to be fine so I will let you get back to it. However please be careful next time. Falling like that could have killed you. All Might was thinking he should keep an eye on this boy. He seemed like he was definitely something. Izuku was busy thinking it did kinda kill him. And an All Might was actually talking to him. Izuku looked up to say something and All Might was already gone. He was that fast. I just met All Might Izuku shouted excitedly to no one but himself and the beach. Izuku came home that day completely tired. Once he entered his room he carefully placed his laptop on his desk before promptly dropping like a bag of rocks onto his bed face first. He felt really tired. He should find a way to not be so dead tired. Maybe make a better schedule. He had all the free time now because of online school so he can make specific things happen at specific times in the day. However he should focus on something even more important. He died, again. He saw that goddess again. It happened after that wristband thing had the gem go from dull to bright. Was that his tell? Like did he actually have a quirk here that let him see a goddess and her revitalize him? The gem must be the signal of a cool down period or something. When it was dull it must have been off, still unavailable. But when it became bright it was ready to be used. How would he even test that? Should he even test that? The gem was completely dull at that point so it was likely that it could have been the light of the sun hitting it at the beach and he was mistaken. Or this thing actually had a cool down and he could die again. But again how can he confirm that? The goddess didn't actually answer him and said the same thing she said the first time. If this was his power he was at a kind of disadvantage against others. People who had powers that were offensive or versatile. His was dying but then not. That wouldn't help him be a hero. He would actually need tools if he wanted to be a hero. An edge that can help him rise above and help everyone he could. What kind of gear would he use though? He had like no idea at first. Maybe he could take inspiration from someone or something. Even a video game could be helpful if the tools could be made and were applicable to his future. What was the first thing he would really need as a pro hero? Past the outfit. Maybe something to help with traversal. Like a grappling hook. Could he actually make one though? Maybe he can use the internet to help him learn how something like that was made. Either way the next 10 months were going to be busy. 
The next day Izuku was back at the beach. He went right at breakfast, which was just two pieces of toast until they managed to secure more money. He did some online work while doing push-ups, which was not as easy as Izuku thought it would be. Sure he knew it wouldn't be easy but he didn't expect it to be this hard. He used the internet during his spare time to research good workout methods, planning on dedicating a good portion of every single day on that. He figured he should also learn how to make gear or at least something as a tool to help him in the field so he would spend a part of the day on that too. Grappling hook was definitely something he loved and could have multiple uses. Should he learn to make a jetpack? How would he? That takes some knowledge he doesn't have. Maybe he could just use the internet to learn things like that. It was the internet and he was fairly certain that he could find what he wanted easily. Today was the day he would find a way to sell the metal though also. Maybe he can find a junkyard or someplace that was interested. After he did some more studying he left his laptop in a crappy shed on the beach and decided to go into town. Before he even got far from the beach he ran into someone. Hello young lad. A blond man with two clumps of his hair drooping over his face said. The man was thin, like he looked like someone just stretched his skin over his skeleton thin. May I ask what you are doing here at the beach? The man wanted to see Izuku's answer. Oh I am here cleaning it. By yourself. That seems like a tough job. I don't mind. It is good practice. Practice. What for? I want to be become a hero. Cleaning trash is a good way to be a hero. The man had a confused look. To me, heroes should do community service and set an example of what a good person is. Izuku really wanted to fix his stuttering at that moment. Maybe he can just talk to people to practice it. That is a valid point. What will you do with this trash? The man seemed to just have more questions for Izuku. I was actually Izuku actually didn't want to say he was going to sell the metal because that felt wrong. He was taking advantage of a bad situation. Granted it wasn't a bad thing to do and it was to keep him and his mom from being homeless and starving. Why not sell it to the businesses around Musutafu? I am sure they would make good use of it. The man offered. That kinda was my plan. Izuku replied sheepishly. I just don't know where to go for that. The man gained a smile. How about you just get them to that section of beach there and I take them for you? You will. Why? Izuku was kinda worried the guy was gonna say something about wanting most of the money, which was something he needed. I also think that heroes should be examples of good citizens. You can keep whatever they sell for. I can be content just with the knowledge that a lad like you is pursuing being a hero. But um Izuku didn't expect that. You really want nothing. Nope. You can have it all lad. This can be my example of heroics to you. Huh? Izuku got confused, his head titling slightly. The guy was a hero. Him? The guy that had a physique that looked holding a paper was a workout. Really? He then looked at the man, trying to think of who he was, if he was familiar at all. The guy was actually familiar a little bit. Now that Izuku was trying to think of heroes this guy looked like All Might if you took all of his muscle and left him with just his skin and bones. But that, that was not possible. No way could this guy be All Might because All Might's muscles were not for show, they were the real thing and you can't fake that. Unless All Might's quirk somehow could do that, which was possible when All Might has never actually revealed his quirk to anyone ever, keeping it a mystery. The man realized his words made the kid try to realize who he was, and it was something the kid wouldn't stop thinking about most likely. There was no way the kid would know it was him though, the chances of that were too small. All Might. Izuku decided to just throw the name out there as a random guess. It's not like that could be taken as just him saying this guy was All Might. It could also be taken as he had something to do with All Might. The man actually coughed up in surprise. What? I said All Might. Izuku stuttered in worry. My boy how did you know? Huh? Izuku gained a look of confusion. Know what? He didn't know. The man asked in shock. Know what? He didn't even know. The man smacked his hand against his face. Then Izuku connected the dots. You're All Might. Yes the man sighed. He couldn't believe he just let that slip. For one he should have denied it and not go with his shock. I am All Might. How? First off please stay quiet. We don't need all that attention. The man sighed. Let's go down to the beach before I explain. All Might examined his quirk. And how he got an injury that made it harder to use his quirk for extended periods of time. The most All Might could use his quirk, which was named one for all, was about three hours a day. It was something jarring to Izuku but he believed it completely. That is why I look like this. All Might finished explaining because of that injury. But why were you here? Izuku asked. Why spend any time at the beach when your time is limited? Because of you Midoriya. All Might answered. I didn't explain it yet but one for all is not just a power stockpiling quirk. It is also a quirk that can be passed on to a new person by the choice of the current holder. My time with one for all has been getting smaller so I was looking for a successor. Truth be told I was going to wait a couple of weeks to actually reveal this to you but apparently we both rushed it. All Might chuckled. He honestly meant to use his skeletal-like appearance to learn more about the boy and then make a decision. However the kid kind of figured out his identity really quick. Boa how why? 
Izuku had so many different ways of asking the question that covered his confusion but had no idea how to word it. All Might chose him, him, as a successor. How hard did he hit his head the day before? Hard enough to die apparently. What do you say Midoriya? A flash of smoke appeared around All Might for a second and he was back to his muscular form. Will you be my successor? Izuku had many moments in his life that he would look back on and be proud of as he made his oath to one of the greatest heroes. This moment however was one he would always be embarrassed by. Upon hearing All Might ask him that question Izuku fainted from shock. Midoriya. All Might got confused. Izuku woke up moments later with All Might repeatedly and lightly smacking his face. Midoriya my boy. Wake up All Might found the reaction great. What happened? Izuku asked in confusion. You passed out lad. All Might turned back to his skeletal form. I admit it is a shocking question to drop on you so I am not surprised. Aya Izuku sat there. He let the question sink in. All Might really asked him, of all people, to be his successor. He hasn't even done anything to earn this. The most notable thing he has ever done was try to kill himself two days ago. Why? Midori, you from what I have seen over the last two days so far seem to be a smart kind who is genuine. Someone like you would be good to pass one for all to. Can I wait? Izuku asked. I haven't done anything to actually earn this. Midori, I am fine with that. For one if I gave it to you right now you would probably have your limbs blow off from the power overwhelming them. What? Izuku was glad he turned down now. Yes, it is quite powerful. I was actually going to guide your physical training if you were the successor and make sure you were ready for it. I wanted to physically train anyways. Perfect. I can help you with it. I can make a schedule that works that will make you be a strong young man. If if you find someone better than me will you give it to them? Izuku asked. Midoriya my boy I asked you and you have me a answer of confusion. You didn't technically say no or yes. You just want to do something that earns it properly. I can respect that. I will honestly not look for another successor. But if you yourself believe someone else should have it I will listen. All Might stood up. Now let's get to your first day of training. Within a week they found a perfect setup. Izuku began his mornings with a good jog and small workout. Then he would do his school work online at the beach, sometimes at home, spend an hour or two yet in G to figure out gear and then spent a majority of his afternoon working out hard. An accident happened on their fourth day where a pile of trash collapsed and Izuku had officially died for the third time. The goddess didn't respond again but Izuku did in fact learn that he had a cool down period and the gem glowing meant he could die and get revived. It was awkward explaining to All Might that his power was actually just dying but then not. At first All Might had a heart attack until Izuku got back up without a scratch and full of energy like he hadn't been working out the whole time. Izuku said he only learned about it recently. Not saying it was a suicide attempt that led to his discovery however. They never registered it as a quirk because Izuku didn't believe it was one. He told All Might he kept seeing a goddess every time it happened and that it had to be a blessing and not a quirk. All Might actually told him he believed that it was quite possibly and didn't say anything against the possibility. After the first month of training Izuku learned something very valuable. When he dies and comes back he is at perfect health. That meant he was no longer hungry, tired or anything. He would be ready to go the second he gets back up. He learned this after he first attempted to use the grappling hook it took him the entire first month to make. It was a prototype and he wanted to test how well it does at shooting the hook. He tested it by shooting a sheet of metal, hoping to catch the hook on the edge of it. However his aim was off and he hit the metal straight on and it ricocheted right at his face like a bullet, killing him instantly. The goddess had a blank look again. No emotion hinted at in her eyes. He was hoping she wasn't just hiding her laughing because that was a pretty dumb way to die. She said the line she said the first two times and he was alive again. Her blank look made him think that she definitely thought he was stupid or something. He definitely felt like it. Seriously who dies like that? Testing a homemade grappling hook and have it ricochet into your skull. He would actually make himself die once every two days to make himself have energy. It was like a cheat code. He didn't have to worry about sleep half the time anymore so he gained even more time to work out and work on his tools. All Might would be there every day in his skeletal appearance, checking on Izuku and making sure he did the proper way of his workouts. All Might admitted it was weird to train a kid who kept finding ways to die sometimes to have full energy and get back into working out. Four months into his training before UA, his grappling hook was complete and he was developing a new tool, gloves and boots that had ways to stick to surfaces. It was really complicated but using the right research and some advice from a curious All Might he managed to make a material that could stick to metal at least. It was a first step he was grateful for. By the fifth month Izuku and All Might had gained an unspoken bond like father and son. At one point Izuku even offered a dinner invite to All Might who was thrilled by it. All Might admittedly liking Ko Midoriya a lot when he met her. She was a sweet lady who did the best with what life gave her. He actually admittedly used a friend to slip money into the her bank account from time to time. Feeling that this woman and her son deserved to live off of more than scrap metal money. 
and a waitress job in Co had recently acquired. In month six Izuku began learning how to actually fight from All Might, the man showing him a form he developed while in America during his early years as a hero. Izuku took to it really easily. That same month Izuku did something he knew he would have to do, learn how to speak without stuttering. It took a bit of effort but thanks to the last six months he was a whole lot more confident in himself so it wasn't as hard as it could be. Plus he admittedly gained a more laid-back personality from the whole dying every few days thing. By month eight the beach was completely clean. All the trash and scraps were gone and people had even heard about the beach being clean and people were coming back slowly. Izuku enjoyed that but he decided no one really needed to know it was him who did it. In the tenth month he actually developed something he kept secret from All Might, saying he wanted it to be a surprise for the exams at UA. Izuku knew it was against some robots and that was it, but he definitely wanted it to be a big surprise. It was the day of the entrance exams. Izuku had a good breakfast and a jog and was ready to do the entrance exams. He had spare clothes because he figured he might be stupid and die again here, for the 78th time. He took one single step across the gate of UA, before he heard a voice he hadn't heard in almost a year. Izuku, the last 10 months had been different for Katsuki. He spent a lot of time learning to control his temper, not always resorting to getting mad with people. Of course he was still pissed at himself for what happened to Izuku and the fact that no one still ever said anything about the guy. He actually learned through his meditation, the best way for him to keep his calm, about trying to make his explosions happen elsewhere from his palms. The first place he tried were the soles of his feet and then he spent any moment he was physically training on that, learning how to use them just as good as his palms. When he came to the exams his plan was to try to have one civil conversation with a new person, in the hopes that he wasn't an asshole still and that someone else was thinking like Izuku when it came to heroes. When he got to UA, though he swore he saw a ghost. A kid with a green tracksuit and wild emerald hair. It was jarring. The guy looked like Izuku from this angle so when Katsuki approached the guy from behind he said his name. Izuku. The emerald-haired teen turned around and saw Katsuki Bakugo, his old childhood bully. The guy looked different, like something had tore him down inside. He was still as physically imposing as before, if not more so. But it looked like he lost that edge of animosity he always had. Bakugo. Izuku asked to make sure this was the real Katsuki Bakugo. How are you alive? Katsuki was looking at Izuku like it was impossible for him to be there. Huh? Izuku asked. Did Katsuki think he was dead? Wait did he think Izuku jumped off the roof of Aldera that day and... The Emerald Teen called himself an idiot for that thought. He did jump off the roof of Aldera that day and die. He just came back because of the goddess's blessing. I didn't die. At least not for longer than a minute. So you didn't listen to me. Katsuki didn't really want to verbalize that horrible thing he believed he pushed Izuku to. Seeing Izuku here was actually lifting a weight off of his shoulders. Izuku realized that the explosion user probably was holding onto a massive amount of guilt this whole time. He wasn't however going to lie about this. I did listen. I did jump. It hurt a lot. Izuku wasn't going to mention anything about his getting a goddess's blessing at all. Katsuki looked down, clutching his fists tightly. He was mad. Not at Izuku. How could he be mad at Izuku? He was mad at himself. Izuku really did almost die because of Katsuki. He felt that he would never make it as right as it should be but he decided to use this moment to say that words that have been eating him up inside for so long. I'm I'm so sorry Katsuki's voice was shaking. For everything for every damn thing I should have never have done his hands were shaking slightly as he tried not to cry. Not because he cared what anyone going past them thought, them, but he needed to say everything he could. For every insult, name, punch, kick, explosion for every damn thing that makes me a horrible person. Izuku had wide eyes. Never in a million years would he actually think this would happen. Katsuki Bakugo showing emotions past anger and arrogance was something of a myth to him. He looked at the teen and realized how much it must have been killing him for the past year. As much as Izuku felt held up by it, which wasn't much, he said his next words. It's okay. I forgive you. The blonde looked up from the ground to look Izuku in the eyes, not believing what he just heard. Izuku forgave him. Just like that. What? What happened sucked. But I used the experience to grow and it got me here. Honestly I think it looks like you already punished yourself more than enough. The Emerald Teen explained. That sounded like Izuku. Katsuki felt a massive weight just leave him. He didn't know why he thought Izuku would hate him for this. Izuku was too nice. It's what made him more of a hero than Katsuki. But you can't just forgive me that easily Katsuki snapped. What I did was horrible. Yeah. But again I got to grow from the experience. I honestly should still be mad or upset or something right now but I'm not. Everything good that has happened to me since then is because of that moment. I am not thanking you for that but I just don't have any hatred of you for it. It just happened. Izuku really didn't hate Katsuki for everything. He didn't like what Katsuki did. But at the least he got to meet the goddess because of it. Katsuki suddenly grabbed Izuku in a hug. The emerald teen startled by the action. I'm glad you are okay. Katsuki sighed. I wish you were. 
Izuku replied as he broke the hug off. He found this new Katsuki weird. Wishing he would just show a bit of the old one so he knew this was in fact actually Katsuki and not a fabrication. I am okay. Katsuki wiped his eyes. I guess the new you is just weird. Hey Katsuki got offended. You aren't the same either Izuku I haven't heard you stutter once he pointed an accusing finger at Izuku. Oh yeah. Izuku laughed. I kinda got rid of that. Kinda cramps my style now. Yeah no shit. Katsuki replied. You seem way more laid back. Izuku felt like at this point to retract his earlier decision of hiding his power. Katsuki. This changed Katsuki. Kinda deserved to know. It kinda comes from my power. Your power? Katsuki asked. Wait you have a quirk. Yes? No? Izuku said both with confusion. That's not an answer. It's two. Izuku replied. You become a. Two. Yeah. Izuku exhaled with a smirk. I don't know for sure but I believe it is a goddess blessing me. Katsuki had a flat expression at that. Okay. You believe that? Sure. The blonde shrugged. It sounds weird to make that up. So what does it do? I can die and then not. Izuku answered. Come again. I can have something that should kill me happen and then walk away in perfect condition. Katsuki then realized something. Wait so you really did. That was the first time. The Emerald Teen nodded. First. Oh yeah I have died 7 to 7 times so far. What? Katsuki shouted. How? Some of it was stupidity to be honest. Katsuki moved past that. So you are immortal. Um I have a limit. Once, and then I have to wait 24 hours. He held up his wrist that had the metal band, with the gem that was currently glowing to indicate he had it ready to use. This is a lot to take in. The blonde said. I got used to it. Do you really forgive me? Katsuki asked again. Yeah. A little part of me says this is weird, but you seem changed. Look who's talking. It's also weird we both talk like old buddies, despite how our last conversation went. The Emerald Teen remarked. Life-changing events are weird. Katsuki had to admit it was odd, but he liked it. So are we friends again? Katsuki felt like he was pushing his luck asking that. Yeah. Izuku nodded as he turned to face Yue. Friends who are gonna get into Yue. Together. Later the two had found their seats in the auditorium of Yue, waiting for everything to begin. They had seats right next to each other, seeing as how Izuku was still at Aldera when he applied to Yue. And we're just talking about small things, like how Katsuki now meditates to deal with his anger or how Izuku spent time talking to random people to get over his stutter. At one point a pro hero stepped onto the stage. The tall blonde hair signified it was present mic to everyone. He tapped a mic and then spoke, really loudly. Hello little listeners the man shouted with volume. Today is the day you kids prove if you got what it takes to get into Yue. We will first have our written test and then after that I, your favorite hero present Mike, will lay down the rules of the practical at that point everyone was made aware of tests already at their seats. This should be fun. Izuku commented as they opened their packets. You can see my excitement, Katsuki said with a bored expression. Not wanting to really take this half of the entrance exam as the other half. Soon the written test was over and present Mike turned on a screen, which would show the rules as he spoke, thankfully quieter than before. Pay attention. Listeners will be seeing if you got skills to pay the bills in a 10-minute practice run at our replica city district. First however I am here to explain the goal and rules of the test a message on the board appeared that said everyone's test site location was on their packets. You can take whatever equipment you want. Just gather at your designated meeting area after my presentation on the rules you dig. Present Mike paused to let everyone remember as much as they can. How many times do you think he is gonna ask if we dig? Izuku asked Katsuki. Until one of us grabs a shovel. Katsuki replied. PFFT, I left it at home. The Emerald Teen joked. Katsuki thought that this joking Izuku was definitely more interesting than how he was before. Alright listeners if you look at the screen above me or your very own handout you will see that there are faux villains in each replica city. Loads of the baddest spread all over the battlefields each one will be rated as a 1, 2, or 3 pointer. Your job is to use your quirk to take out as many of them as you can and rack up a high score also. You can't attack other competitors directly that's nasty anti-hero stuff and it's against the rules present Mike explained. People with area of effect quirks have to be careful then. Izuku remarked quietly to Katsuki. They were speaking at a quiet level during the whole event. Makes them practice control. It would be good for people to be aware of the risks of using their quirks like that. The blonde nodded. Excuse me. Everyone in the auditorium turned to look at the person who spoke. It was a glasses-wearing kid with a stern look that appeared to be permanently stapled on his face. On the handout and the board above you there are clearly four types of villains listed not three if this is an error. Then it's a huge embarrassment for a top-tier National Academy of UAS caliber what is the meaning of this? He then turned to look up at Izuku and Katsuki. And you two stop talking during a presentation do you think this is a joke? We are discussing the presentation and what he is saying. Izuku responded. We are taking this serious enough to not detail the entire presentation for a question he would probably answer. The man hasn't even gotten to the fourth robot yet. Katsuki added. 
The teen looked at Izuku and Katsuki. Holding his stern look, he didn't really expect them to do anything but apologize and be quiet. I was actually about to get to villain number 4. Present Mike started. The fourth type of villain is called the Zero Pointer. It's a big gimmick that goes wild near the end. They are too strong to be defeated and are there just to stir things up, so fighting them is hopeless and useless. If I were you, I'd do my best to avoid those sucker. The kid nodded and sat back down, satisfied with the explanation. He still planned on later saying something to the blonde and emerald-haired teens. Well that's pretty much all I have Mike went on. I'll leave you with a quote that my academy prides itself on go beyond plus ultra now get out there and have a fun time this test go break a leg plus ultra. Break a leg? Katsuki asked. I did that last week. Izuku joked. Really? Yeah. I kinda fell. Doing what? Falling? That tells me nothing. It tells you I fell. I was attempting to speak to the goddess. Izuku admitted quietly as they walked to the buses. You die sometimes to talk to her. I try. Izuku admitted. She never responds. She just keeps saying rise my hero, and then taps my head and I am back up. Plus tell me you aren't gonna use that power here. Katsuki asked. Izuku tapped a pocket on his track jacket. I have it saved up waiting for this if I use it. What is that? A surprise tool that might help me later. I'm not even in your test site. What is it? It's a... Excuse me. The blue-haired teen cut Izuku off to speak to them as he approached. What? Katsuki's anger flashed through as he said that. He was ticked off someone interrupted them. I want a further word about your disturbance during the presentation. The other teen said. Weren't you the one who stopped the entire presentation? Izuku asked. Yeah. We were literally whispering to each other, you shouted. Katsuki pointed an accusing finger at the teen. So we should talk to you about your disturbance. The emerald teen stated. Today we let you off with a warning. The teen narrowed his eyes at Izuku slightly. You come off as disrespectful. That's disrespectful to say that when he calls you out for your own problems. Katsuki said. Write him a citation. Izuku patted Katsuki's shoulder. I have to get to my bus. He left. The blonde looked at the blue-haired teen. I'd kick your ass but I have to get to my own bus. He then left as well. The other teen just stood there for a second, before shaking it off to get to his own bus. Izuku stayed quiet the whole ride to his test site, tweaking his grappling hook and making sure his magnetic gloves still worked well. He studied the images of the robots at the presentation and he had to assume there had to be a simple off switch on the machines for the kids who weren't completely destructive or had quirks that could incapacitate them. If he had to guess their backs made the most sense, so his plan was to use his grappling hook or his speed to get in close and just press the button, it would be pretty stupid to just try to break them all. Sure Izuku had muscles now but not robot-destroying muscles. The bus stopped and all of the kids were getting off. Kids just stay behind the red line until they give the say-so. The bus driver said. Izuku managed to stand near the front, just a step or two from the red line. He was excited. This was finally his chance to prove that he was hero material. To show every doubt he had in himself that it was all for nothing to doubt him. Even if those robots didn't have off buttons he could find a way. He would find a way. He did not spend the last 10 months working his ass off for nothing. All right kids present Mike's voice spoke over intercoms in the various test sites. Go crazy. Most of the kids got confused, expecting a countdown or something. Not Izuku. The second he heard present Mike begin to speak he, admittedly ran, too hyped up to really listen to what was said. It was just luck that present Mike was actually starting the test or Izuku would have been disqualified. Izuku ran into his first threat, a two-pointer who immediately went after the boy. Let's hope this works, Izuku said as he shot his grappling hook at a street light, which worked and began to retract and pull Izuku over the head of the two-pointer. Izuku pressed a button that made the hook release itself as he grabbed the head of the two-pointer and slid down its back. Score Izuku shouted as he found a red button literally labeled shut off button. He pressed it and the robot shut off. So they do have off buttons Izuku's luck really was good. He didn't waste time and used the street light again with his grappling hook to swing away towards another robot, a three-pointer this time. All Might had taken a job at UA. One he took at first to find a successor, but seeing as how Izuku was still on the fence it became a job to guide the future generation. Also watch over the boy who became like a son to him. The test isn't just about destroying the villain bots. An animal of unknown origin, either a mouse or a bear or a cross between the two really, said as he stirred a cup of tea. He was Nezu, one of the first quirked animals and smarter than 99% of humans thanks to his intelligence quirk. He was the principal of UA. It is also about damage control. A screen showed a girl with enlarged hands catch a truck that was thrown by a three-pointer. Keeping calm and being aware of your surroundings. A beast-like looking teen covered in brown fur was seen calmly incapacitating a two-pointer by dodging a shot from a three-pointer, making it hit the two-pointer before he went after the three-pointer. Combat versatility is very important too. A boy with a bird-like head was seen helping someone off the ground as what was seemingly his shadow slashed through a three-pointer, helping others no matter what. 
A certain explosive blonde was shown destroying a three-pointer that was about to crush a girl with permanent blush before he helped her up. Izuku swing from the tail of a two-pointer he just turned off to jump onto a three-pointer, using his magnetic gloves to quickly scale the side and punch the off button. That makes five three-pointers. Izuku stood straight up on the three-pointer and looked around. Most of the villain bots in the immediate area were already dealt with so Izuku couldn't do much. The most he could do was count his score up. Let's see. Five three-pointers. That's 15 points there. I think it was seven. No it was eight two-pointers. That's 16 points right there. So far 31 points. Plus the five one-pointers I have 36 villain points. Is that enough? Izuku asked out loud. A few more minutes went by before Nezu spoke again. Multiple test takers all were showing promise and teachers already had eyes on quite a few of the kids. But most importantly Nezu began as he pressed a button to begin the biggest part of the exams. A loud booming sound came from each test site as the zero pointers were released. This is a test to see their true spirit. Izuku looked up with wide eyes at the building-sized robot that just made its presence known. Multiple thoughts went through his head but his next sentence captured most of them perfectly. Well, Izuku muttered, targets located. The massive villain bot's voice came out like metal. It brought its fist against the building next to it to adjust its standing in the streets it began to move towards the student. Run a kid said as he and a majority of the others all ran away from the massive threat. All across the sites most of the kids were seen panicking and fleeing. The teachers had blank looks, just waiting to see anything actually worth it. And they did. In some sites there were a few kids who all chose not to run from them but instead get others away from the zero pointers and make sure everyone was safe. Some kids tried to find ways to slow the villain bots down. But in two particular sites were the beginnings of a true heroic spirit. Test Site 7. Katsuki made explosions crackle to his hands, making the sweat more intense as he ran at the zero pointer, blasting himself into the air to get its attention on him. Hey face the blonde would never fix his mouth when it came to villains, or robots that were test villains. I have someone to honor so come at me. The zero pointer heard his words and brought up a hand to fight the explosive team. Test Site 8. Izuku used his grappling hook to swing from streetlights or use down villain bots to get himself closer as he ran at the very very big zero pointer. He had a very useful plan that would definitely get rid of this but he just had to get up to its head. Luckily that's where his magnetic gloves came in handy. He managed to get to a spot where he could grapple to its hand as it smashed a good chuck off the road and used his gloves to hang on tightly as the metal arm bigger than his apartment went back up. I shouldn't have said it was a surprise tool that might help me later. Izuku commented as he used his grappling hook again to get to its shoulder. Tell me who these two are. Nezu had increased the size of the screens that were watching the two kids. Katsuki Bakugo and Izuku Midoriya. Present Mike answered. Tell me about their personalities. Bakugo was stated as being very prideful and foul-mouthed until he had an encounter with a villain almost a year ago. Now he seems that be quieter and calmer. I wouldn't call that calmer. A woman with dark hair commented. His quirk lets him create explosions from his sweat. It was said to be just his hands but it looks like he can see his feet as well. Present Mike continued. And what about Mr. Midoriya? Nezu asked. He found it odd that the boy hasn't shown his quirk yet. Was it not a battle quirk? What is his quirk? He is labeled as quirkless. Present Mike said. All Might had a blank look listening to that. He and Izuku never really bothered to get that filled in and probably should because it would definitely come up eventually. Izuku held off because he kept saying it might not be a quirk and just the goddess of his blessing him. A dark-haired man with tired eyes actually began to pay attention. Was this kid really quirkless and trying to scale the zero-pointer? This boy had definitely gained his attention now. Quirkless, Nezu said in surprise. I wonder what he has planned. All Might exhaled. He was hoping that his pupil wasn't going to do something that ended with him dying again. Izuku definitely was gonna die again. That was his plan. He had that stock in a dumbass idea that involved his third piece of gear. Getting to the zero pointer's neck Izuku grinned like a madman as he pulled out a single item he definitely would be questioned for having. A homemade bomb. Izuku had a bomb he made himself. His plan was simple. He had no firepower past the bomb so he would use it to blow the damn thing's neck off. He can jump to safety by jumping straight off of the thing. It's not like it mattered where he fell when he can easily just get back up from it when it inevitably kills him from this height. Izuku started the bomb's timer before he placed it. Not really worried since he would definitely get away in time. Suddenly though the robot turned its head to face a test taker who got brave. And Izuku in its neck got slammed at high force to his neck from the sharp side of its jaw. Izuku's neck broke completely and he instantly saw black. No one in the viewing room said anything for a second. Did a kid just die taking their test? I'm calling the test Nezu tried to grab the mic. Wait look. All Might was glad he knew Izuku had that stock saved up. Izuku cursed as he was in the black void again. He really just died because a damn machine turned its head was a side effect of the goddess blessing him just dying stupidly half the time. 
The grey-blue light came into existence and Izuku saw the goddess again. At least this isn't dumb like the grappling hook, Izuku said to himself, knowing the girl wouldn't respond anyways. Good luck my hero, the goddess said as she tapped his forehead. Wait, why was that different? Izuku asked right as he felt the sensation of being revived. Izuku stood up with renewed energy. He hadn't fallen off the zero pointer's shoulder, hitting a raised part that kept him there. He didn't even let go of the bomb he was holding. Oh Izuku said as he looked at the bomb that was going off. He never put a stop button on this damn thing he didn't think something like this would happen Ah, he was panicking and just threw the bomb with a timer at 10 seconds left at a groove in the neck of the zero pointer. Izuku had to get the hell out of there. Now he tried to grab his grappling hook and found it gone. It must have fallen off of him. Was his luck all just deciding to flip him off now? Izuku began to curse repeatedly as he began to run down the shoulder of the zero pointer before his excessive bomb went off. He managed to slide down the shoulder right as the bomb went off. The explosion completely destroyed most of the head of the zero pointer and its upper body. Izuku got launched far and used his magnetic gloves to attach to a thin sheet metal piece of the upper arm of the zero pointer as he soared through the sky. He was probably going to break a good portion of his body at this speed. At least the zero pointer got stopped though. No one was even close thankfully when the bomb went off, even the kid who inadvertently caused Izuku's death who was using long range attacks. Izuku admittedly was screaming as he flew. It closed his eyes as he got close to the ground, thinking him and this crappy metal ride of his were definitely going a couple of meters below the street. He closed his eyes and waited for the impact. Nothing. He felt nothing. Damn he really died that fast. Painless was better than what happened when he shot himself with his grappling hook on accident. Did he become a complete splat against the ground? That would have made you leave this world if I hadn't prevented it. Huh? Did a girl just speak? Wait was that the goddess? He wouldn't mistake her voice for anyone's. Izuku opened his eyes and saw that he was upside down, floating just about two meters above the ground. He looked forward and saw a girl. Not just any girl. It was the goddess. She had everything, matching perfectly in appearance except for the clothes. The goddess had a pale purple kimono that was knee length. This girl had a gray training outfit, but everything else matched perfectly. Shin length, pale gray hair, parted to the right and hanging down over her eye and obscuring the majority of the left side of her face. Check. Dark bags under her pretty blue eyes. Check. A completely blank look on her face. Check. It was her for sure. And Izuku kind of just stared at her, mouth open in shock while still attached to the metal sheet she was making float. Are you in good condition? She asked in that voice that was definitely the goddess's. This was without a doubt the goddess. How was she here? Why was she here? To save him. Goddess. Izuku asked in complete confusion. I am not a high deity. Aho WH Izuku had so many questions but he got cut off by his gloves malfunctioning and losing their magnetic property, making him fall straight to his back on the ground. That's it everybody present Mike announced the end of the test. Not at full energy since he was still getting overthinking he just saw a kid die. Wah. Izuku looked up at the girl. I believe that you took a lot of force to the head. You almost left our plane of existence. She didn't know why this guy was so confused by her or called her a goddess. I suggest getting to a medical professional. She began to walk away. Izuku just laid there, staring at the spot she just was. She really existed. The goddess was real and she was even prettier with regular color to her and not just the grey-blue light. Izuku shot up to say something to her but she was just gone. Or he couldn't see her. There were a lot of people where he almost became a stain on the ground. What is going on? Izuku asked himself as he sat back down. This was also confusing to him. He didn't even get a real name from her. Should he use his next stock to try to conversate with her? Yes, walking out of the gate at UA. Izuku still looked confused as all hell. He accidentally walked right into someone as a result. It was just Katsuki however. What's the face for? The blonde asked. She was there. Izuku replied half-heartedly, still not mentally caught up with where he was. Who was there? The goddess. You died again. No, wait yes. Izuku wasn't really listening. He was was still too confused. Seeing the goddess really threw him off. I don't like that you died. Where was she? Katsuki didn't really want to talk about Izuku dying again. She was there. Right when I was about to die for real she stopped me. Die for real? What? Did you almost die twice in an exam? Yes. She stopped me from falling and then left. So she can resurrect you two times now. I didn't die the second time. She was actually there, like here with us. Like she was taking the test also. Huh. Maybe you were just seeing things after that first death. Or she is real and watching you before you die. The blonde offered. Was that it? Or was Izuku overthinking this? Or was he underthinking it? The next day went by slowly. Izuku really just wanted his stock back because he planned on using it the second he could to try to talk to the goddess again. All Might hasn't said anything to him since before the exams when he wished Izuku luck. Katsuki had gotten his new number and Izuku told his mom how they saw each other and reconnected. 
Inko wasn't as thrilled at first hearing how Izuku saw Katsuki but upon listening to the whole thing she took her dislike down a bit, but she still wasn't happy about him at all. Once his extra life returned Izuku rushed to the roof of his building, not explaining to his mother why he just up and ran while they were eating lunch. He got to the roof and didn't hesitate to just jump off. A side effect he guessed if knowing his death sometimes can have no consequences but a few seconds of pain made Izuku way too well it wasn't confident. Maybe it was stupid. Anyways he fell the eight floors and hit the ground head first. He saw black immediately as he died. Izuku was in that black void place in between lives again and began to speak again. Hey goddess he shouted. Talk to me this time why were you there? She appeared in that light again like she always did. With her blank look and white kimono and everything. Can you talk to me this time please? Izuku asked. The goddess didn't answer. She only tapped his head like before. Rise my hero. She said as she tapped his forehead. Better be glad you are cute or I would be mad. Izuku muttered to himself as he felt the sensation of being revived again. Izuku was on his back facing upright after he got revived. He didn't move because he was just laying there. He was a little annoyed she never replied at all. Why did he say good luck instead of rise at the exams though? Was that really important or was he really just overthinking things? Was she just messing with him? Hey um I'm Izuku. Katsuki spoke from above the emerald team. He was coming over to officially apologize to Inko about his horribleness and found Izuku just lying on a oath in between some of the apartment buildings. Whatcha doing? Dying? Izuku sighed, not moving as he just stared up at the cloudy sky. Did you just jump? Katsuki looked at Izuku's clothes to see some rips but not a scratch on Izuku. Yeah, she talked to you. No, want to just lie there for a while and I will get you in a minute. I guess. Katsuki nodded. Okay I will be back in a few. He went towards the back door of Izuku's apartment building so he can go get yelled at by Inko. Izuku looked up at the clouds. Are you just messing with me? He spoke to the air but the question was meant for the goddess. It's not like it matters cause he gets the same amount of conversation from both. All Might, in his skeletal form, knocked on the Midoriya's apartment door. Inko opened it and gave a warm smile. Hello Yagi. Inko always enjoyed when All Might comes over. She was very aware of his condition because he accidentally lost the muscle form in front of her three months back. It was shocking but she accepted it. They became close enough that they even learned All Might's real name, Tashinori Yagi. Hello Midoriya. Is young Izuku here? Behind you, Izuku spoke up. He had just come back from the grocery store. Hello lad, I have a letter for you. He handed a gold envelope to Izuku. My Yue, letter Izuku exclaimed. It is. I hand delivered it thinking it would be enjoyable to see your face. My face isn't funny looking. The teen replied as he set the bags of groceries on the table. He immediately opened the letter. I didn't say it earlier because it would be a surprise. Tashinori began. But I have a job at UA, starting with the new school year, as the Foundational Heroic Studies course teacher. Izuku stopped reading his score on the written test, where he didn't miss a single question getting a perfect score. Wait so you are going to teach heroics? Yep Tashinori grinned. I didn't want to tell you before the exam because I didn't want you to think favoritism was going to factor into your exam. I only gave honest views of your performance when asked what I thought. What did you think? Izuku asked. That you are reckless. Tashinori answered. That you act without thinking sometimes. Rude. Izuku said jokingly. But, you showed courage and intelligence with the zero pointer. Running straight at it with no hesitation. Something I believe makes a good hero. The others definitely believe that too. Izuku nodded. So no one questioned me having a homemade bomb. A homemade what? Inko asked. Huh? Izuku asked. I was going to ask about that next. Tashinori said. But I really don't want to know how you made a bomb that powerful. It took three months and. I don't want to know. Tashinori held up his hand. The only major thing that should be done is getting that power of yours registered as a quirk, even if you don't know for sure if it isn't one. You caused a panic with the staff when your neck got broken. What? Inko asked Izuku with a tone that suggested she was preparing a lecture. She knew he could survive deaths but couldn't stand the idea of him dying at all. A robot turned its giant head and its jaw broke my neck. Izuku explained with embarrassment and explained the bomb. Inko wasn't going to let that slide either. I made a bomb for whenever it might be useful. Izuku shrugged. Inko narrowed her eyes. Was anyone hurt? Izuku getting thrown away in the blast. Tashinori answered. Other than that. No, don't make another one. But mom the teen protested. No bombs. Inko was not going to argue over this. Fine. Izuku sighed. Or at least that one was cool. He went back to his letter. Hero points. Yes that was a category they kept secret to test your kid's genuine good nature. From how helpful you were to others when they needed help. To big sacrifices like your feet against the zero pointer. Does it count as a big sacrifice if I had the plan of using my power? Izuku asked. They weren't aware of it so it counts. Plus you did it regardless. 60 hero points. Izuku read the score. Yes, a few teachers, one man in particular actually, found respect in your actions despite you having virtually no power. 
All Might said. With 96 points total you actually place first by a single point. I got first. Izuku asked in shock. He looked at another paper, one showing the top 10 scores of the exam. First place Izuku Midoriya. 36 villain points 60 hero points. Second place Katsuki Bakugo. 70 villain points 25 hero points. I actually beat Katsuki. Izuku was surprised. Young Bakugo did tremendous himself. He showed kindness to the others as well as you. However I believe your lack of firepower like has made everyone believe your efforts to be more earning of points. I wonder how he feels about this. Izuku asked. Then it actually hit him. He just placed first in an exam for future heroes how? Because of a bomb and a death wish. His phone went off and Izuku looked at it. It was a message from Katsuki. Katsuki, nice score. You earned this. Izuku smiled. Katsuki really had changed for the better. He replied back. Izuku, dude we both did awesome we are on the road to be heroes now. He had no idea how tough of a road it would be. His road that led Izuku Midoriya to become the greatest hero of his generation. Everything was on fire. An intense black fire that was consuming the world around him. He couldn't go anywhere and was trapped, nowhere to go. Izuku jumped up in a cold sweat, breathing heavily from whatever that dream was that he was having. Was that even a dream? It felt closer to a nightmare if anything. Izuku sat on his bed for a few minutes just cooling down from the bad sleep, blankly looking out his window that told him it was still the middle of the night. The Emerald Teen plopped back down to his bed and tried to go back to sleep, but after 10 minutes felt too anxious, not able to go back to sleep. Funchicles. Izuku sighed as he sat back up. He mentally groaned at the idea of being awake this early and not getting proper sleep, but then again he doesn't normally get proper sleep anyways. Izuku grabbed his shoes as he thought about what he would do exactly. Training was kind of a no since he was told to try to relax before UA. All Might saying that it isn't good to just spend 24-7 always training or working on his gear. Izuku guessed he could just get some fresh air, even if he was noticing his clock that said it was 2.47am. With that in mind he went out of his apartment. Wandering for a minute brought Izuku to the fountain in the center of the apartment building. No one else there naturally and Izuku decided to just sit at a bench. He just sat there for a minute before he had heard the sound. A low humming sound, like a generator. A soft sound of some energy at work. Izuku tried to look for whatever it was and the sound led him right to his left forearm, where the bracer was. The blue gem seemed to be humming with energy, glowing more than usual. Izuku was about to tap it when a voice broke the quiet of the night. Izuku. It was Katsuki. The other teen was there now, looking confused at seeing Izuku there at this time of night. What are you doing here? Couldn't sleep. Izuku forgot about his bracer then. What are you doing here? Katsuki let out a breath. I couldn't sleep either. Why are you here though? Being in my room felt unproductive. The emerald teen responded. But at least out here it doesn't feel like that. I would say that sounds odd but I am here too. The blonde sat down on the bench as well. It just feels like a good spot to think. I guess Izuku replied. A minute later he spoke again. So what are you thinking about? Katsuki rubbed his right hand where he had a scar on his middle finger's knuckle. Just small things. The emerald teen looked at the blonde. No one has issues sleeping and just goes for a walk like this with thoughts of small things man. It's just Katsuki sighed. I was Forgy. You're fine man. Izuku stated, knowing exactly where Katsuki was about to take it. Don't beat yourself up over it man. Izuku you forgave me too easily. Katsuki looked at the teen next to him. What I did was definitely bad. Izuku cut him off again. I know what you did was bad and shouldn't be forgiven just like that. So why did you? I guess I just don't like other people struggling with anything. The emerald teen held his bracer, which had lost the hum it had earlier. I could see you were different from back then. The guy back then for one would never cry or show weakness in front of me of all people. You aren't him and are trying to not be like him. I think I can forgive you because you understand the pain I got and try to stop that from coming to others. Someone who causes that pain shouldn't be a hero. It's a good thing we are people who want to stop that pain then right. Izuku asked, put a smile on our faces and protect people, making them feel safe. Izuku you know what I mean. Katsuki had a frown as he looked at the knuckle he had scarred months ago, a habit he formed when upset or worried about anything. And you know what I mean. I still did all of that. And you still realized your mistakes and spent close to a year now trying to change right. You can't just ignore that progress you made Katsuki. I the blonde side. I just need to forgive yourself. Izuku finished. I can forgive you, but you can't forgive yourself. Just try to let yourself off a little bit. You might be able to see the improvements if you do. They were silent for another minute before Katsuki gave out another sigh. How did you become wise like this? I spent half of my time these past 10 months living in a dump. I gained hobo wisdom. The blonde snorted. Hobo wisdom. Yep. It comes in handy when friends are being stupid. The team nodded. Katsuki nodded in response. Why are you out here exactly? Please tell me you aren't also going through issues like me. Izuku shook his head. Nope, just a bad dream and being restless for me. What was it about? I don't really know it had fire. 
but nothing felt right and it is kinda hard trying to remember details. Hmm, what's with the wrist thing? Katsuki noticed it glowing brightly, the humming returning. I don't know, I just noticed it before you came here. Izuku held up his arm. So this is new to you. The blonde narrowed his eyes at the strange piece of armor on his friend's arm. It doesn't do this after you don't die for an extended time or anything. Nope. I should really do something though. Izuku said as he went to tap the blue gem. Don't just mess with a thing like that. Katsuki made sure to take a step away from the bench. It isn't exactly normal you know. Izuku waved his right arm. Bah. I won't know anything if I don't try right. He then tapped the blue gem. And nothing happened. Izuku just sighed. I don't know why I expect things to actually happen anymore. And then something happened. Blue energy began to pour out of the gem and flow away from them, seemingly pulling Izuku's arm with it. Izuku walked along with the energy, like he was in a trance almost. Izuku, Katsuki muttered as he began to follow, getting in front of the emerald team. Hey what's going on? I feel it. Izuku said cryptically. Something is calling out. What is? I I don't know. Izuku kept walking, letting the odd feeling that encompassed him guide him as he left the area of the apartment complex and down the sidewalk. It just it could be where the goddess is. I am going. Katsuki made a hard expression. I don't like it. I am going too to make sure nothing happens. They had kept walking for a while, going down the empty streets of Musutafu until they got to the edge of a forest. It's leading me out there. Izuku mumbled as he stepped towards the trees. Hey wait. Katsuki grabbed Izuku's arm to stop him. Izuku it is not even four in the morning. I don't think we should go in the woods right now. Izuku looked at the trees. The feeling is stronger. It isn't far. Izuku the blonde sighed before he gave an answer. We better be back here in not even half an hour. He let go of Izuku's arm to let him continue walking. 30 minutes. The emerald teen nodded. They walked a few minutes into the trees. A straight path through the woods as Izuku felt the guidance of the blue energy. Katsuki had stayed on alert the whole time. Having a tight guard in case anything or anyone was out there being anything close to a threat, Izuku stopped in a small clearing near the bottom of a hill with a steep side next to them, rocks of varying sizes littering the area. I don't feel it anymore, Izuku said with confusion as he looked around. It had to have had a reason to guide you out here. Katsuki responded as he looked around as well. Maybe the goddess left something here for you. Maybe. Izuku moved a decently sized rock, the word boulder fitting it more. A note or something to explain what is going on. The blonde offered as he checked a tree to see if anything was stuck to it. I hope so. The emerald teen replied. So can you tell me anything about this goddess? Katsuki asked. Like what does she look like or anything like that? She has pale gray hair that covers the left side of her face. Blue eyes with dark bags under them. She normally has a completely blank look on her face. Izuku said easily. She glows blue like the gem here, but a bit grayer, and has a kimono. You said that really fast with little thought. Katsuki responded. Do you have a thing for the goddess? What? Izuku asked in shock. I I know. Hey I am not judging man. Katsuki held his hands up. I imagine I might get a crush on a girl who kept me from dying countless times too. It's not countless it's 7 to 9. So far, Katsuki replied, ignoring the fact that Izuku really kept count of his deaths. Plus didn't you die the last time to try to talk to her? I think you have a crush man. Izuku turned red. Shut you. Katsuki smirked. If she is reviving you this many times she might have a crush on you too. Izuku didn't even know he could turn redder than he already was, but he did. Aiju he didn't respond this time and Katsuki kept his smirk as he looked around more. A few minutes later the two just stopped looking around, standing in the clearing together looking disappointed in their search results that brought up nothing. Did she make me come out here for nothing? Izuku groaned in disappointment. There has to be something. Katsuki stated, you definitely felt something and it guided you here. But why? Izuku asked as he looked at the bracer. Why are you so confusing? He asked the inanimate object. He got the same answer he always got and just expected, nothing. Izuku picked up a rock, just the size of a base, and threw it at the side of the hill. Then a crack was heard and the stone side of the hill crumpled apart, revealing an old stone door that was hidden behind a wall made from the rocks. Um Katsuki looked at the stone door from his spot. I think that's for you. Izuku walked up to the stone door slowly, confused about how it was hidden there like that. What was this door even? What was behind it? I don't see a doorknob. He just tapped the cold stone. I kind of doubt something this old has a doorknob. The blonde responded as he joined Izuku at the door, placing his own hand on it. How has no one ever found this before? You just uncovered it with a rock on accident. We used to explore the woods too. Izuku stated, you would think we would easily have found this. Maybe it's luck. Anyways this has got to be what brought you here. How do I open it though? The emerald teen asked as he looked around the door for any sort of button or lever. He knocked his fist against the rock in hope of finding more rocks that fall off so he can find a way in. Hey Izuku Katsuki deadpanned as he kept his hand on the door. You realize I can just blast it open right? Izuku blinked, realizing that fact. Oh, can you? 
Of course, the explosive blonde responded as he used his quirk to unleash an explosion and blow cracks into the stone door. He narrowed his eyes. This is tough stone that should have broke it. He popped off more explosions and the door eventually broke apart, showing a dark tunnel. So we are dungeon explorers now. He looked at his emerald friend. I guess so. Izuku turned his phone flashlight on. What do you think is in there? Let's look instead of guess. Katsuki suggested as he turned on his own phone's flashlight. Right. Izuku stepped in for it. He used his light to guide his steps. Hope we don't find a mummy. If we find a mummy I am blowing it to hell and making you go home and stay there until we go to UA. Hey I can handle a mummy. I don't want you just searching for mummies. I can handle myself. Izuku stepped out of the dark tunnel and into what was a chamber. The area was mostly barren and covered in plant life like it hasn't been touched in a long time. The only things that was noticeable were a wooden and a wooden figure with a wooden sword in its hand standing in the center of the room. The wooden figure was in a stance like it was ready to fight and the wood that made it was rotted in multiple spots. On the opposite side from the way they came in was another door. What is this? Izuku stopped at the wooden while Katsuki looked at the wooden figure, which was just a few centimeters taller than him. Is this a training place? The explosive blonde asked. The emerald teen opened the wooden and inside of it found a wooden sword, exactly like the one the wooden figure had. He picked up the object. Maybe. Suddenly the wooden figure moved. In a quick motion it swung its wooden weapon at Katsuki and struck him over the head. The blonde was caught off guard and was sent down to his knees. Ah Izuku jumped up in shock but kept his grip on the wooden weapon tightly. Yukatsuki scowled as he used an explosion to blast up at the wooden figure to unleash an explosion on its head, only for it to simultaneously raise a knee into the blonde's before using its open hand to grapple the teen and throw him away from it. Katsuki landed on his feet and his scowl got bigger. How the is that thing moving? The wooden figure rushed at Izuku and the emerald teen instinctually blocked with the wooden sword he was still holding, stopping the wooden figure from striking him with its own weapon. Stay back you termite lunch Izuku said as he swung the sword in a somehow familiar and what felt like a comfortable fashion and struck the figure in his wrist, cracking the hand off due to the rotted nature of it. The wooden figure tried to catch the sword that was falling but Izuku swung his weapon at the figure again and snapped the head into a sideways position, its neck half broken. How do you know how to fight with a sword? Katsuki asked as he blasted back into the fight, blasting the figure away from Izuku. I don't know. It just feels natural. Natural talent. Nice. Katsuki grinned. With that and my explosions this thing is toast. Izuku turned to face the wooden figure, whose broken head was aimed at him. It felt like the thing was targeting him. Katsuki let me fight it. What? It is focused on me. You can see its stance. Yeah but that doesn't mean anything. Katsuki wasn't even sure how Izuku suddenly just knew sword fighting stances he. I grabbed the sword and then it moved. Maybe I set it off. Your logic isn't something I agree with here. Let's just take it out together. Katsuki blasted off at the wooden figure right as it rushed at Izuku. The emerald teen blocked another sword swing as Katsuki blasted off two explosions and sent the figure to its side. Izuku reacted and swung in a downward strike and broke off the figure's head completely. I guess I got carried into dramatics. Izuku breathed. Katsuki picked up his phone that was dropped earlier, dusting off the device as he aimed the light at the wooden figure to watch for movement. Try not to man. The blonde exhaled as he looked to their defeated opponent. How did this thing even move? I don't know how exactly but it didn't move until I held this. The emerald teen shook his wooden weapon. I don't think that things work like that Izuku. Things are weird. I didn't have my bracer until I died and came back the first time. So this could be a quirk. Katsuki kicked the wooden figure. A sing sound got their attention and the two turned and flashed their lights on the source to see the door that led farther in was now open. Um I don't remember opening that. Neither do I Izuku grabbed the second wooden sword, the one that was used by the wooden figure, and offered it to Katsuki, who gave him an odd look. Weapons don't hurt to have. You keep that. You seem to have a knack for them. Katsuki held up his palm. Plus I have this weapon. I'm surprised you aren't saying for us to go back right now. The dummy got me mad so I want to clobber whoever is in there. The explosive blonde admitted. It might be something about the goddess so I am definitely going. Izuku stated as he put his second wooden sword in the same hand as the first. That way he can hold his phone as well. I lead the way since my attacks have more power. Katsuki said as he walked towards the open door with a palm raised, ready to blow up anything he thinks needed to be blown up. Got it. The emerald teen nodded, following his friend. At least it wasn't a mummy. It was a dummy instead. I am sure he was smart enough to classify as average. Izuku joked. Katsuki had a blank look at the joke as he kept walking. Shut up. It was funny and you know it. Izuku grinned as they stepped into the next tunnel. It goes farther down. Katsuki said as he looked down the tunnel. It is a straight path and farther than my light can go. Maybe it is a set of rooms and each one is like a puzzle. That sounds like dumb video game logic. Video games can be influenced by real life. I guess. But I don't think this is like a video game. 
The blonde said as he was leading them down the tunnel. Who made this is what I want to know. Izuku said as he looked at the plant-covered walls. Had to be a long time ago for all this stuff to just be here. Katsuki stated. Honestly might be early age when quirks showed up. That explains the wooden figure I guess. Leftover quirk traps. But can quirk effects like that really last this long? It's possible. There has got to be something important here then. Whether it is about your goddess or something else entirely. They continued to walk farther down for a few minutes in silence. Hey I see a door. Izuku pointed forward as they reached the bottom of the tunnel and could see a door near the edge of their lights. The door made of metal this time and shut. Metal. Katsuki sighed. Why? Maybe someone made it a home or it was an extra layer to the security. So something is definitely in there. So are you going to blast this one open? Izuku tapped the door. Wait it has a handle this. The emerald team pointed to the side on a wall where a bar was. I spin this and we are in. I think. It could be locked. The other door wasn't. It unlocked for us. I guess it doesn't hurt to try. Katsuki looked at the door. You open it and I will be ready to blast anything in there. Izuku nodded and grabbed the handle, turning it with a struggle as the rusted piece showed its age. The teen grunted as he put more force into it and finally moved the handle. The door began to open with a loud groaning sound of metal grinding against metal and another chamber was seen on the other side of the door with a single pale sea green light inside. The light coming from what appeared to be a lantern above a stone grave. Akatsuki. Izuku flashed his light to his friend. Is that a grave? Is is this a tomb? I made too many mummy jokes. Izuku took a step into the room. Wait. Katsuki out his arm out. This place could have traps if it is a tomb. We would have found one already then. The dummy. That's a good point. Should we go back? The emerald teen had dropped one of his wooden swords to hold just one. At this point I don't think either of us wants to. And I thought I was reckless. Izuku responded. I don't think it counts when you know that you can come back from dying. It counts. Izuku walked farther in and shined his light across the chamber, which was empty again save for the center where the grave was on a raised circular platform of the chamber. I don't see another door or anything. So is this all just a tomb? Then why the dummy? Izuku stepped up onto the raised platform with the stone grave. Should we open it? Izuku that is a dumb idea. Katsuki said as he stepped next to the tomb as well. Is that a no or just wanting to say it before we do it? At this point I really think we are idiots. The explosive blonde sighed. Let's open it. The two teens put their hands on the top of the stone lid and pushed as hard as they could, getting the stone slab to fall off on the other side. What they saw inside of the tomb was shocking. Nothing. They saw nothing. Shouldn't there at least be bones? Izuku looked at his friend. He wanted to see a dead body. Katsuki asked. I think not seeing a dead body in a grave in an old creepy dungeon is creepier than not seeing a body at all. The emerald teen stated. Especially after all of my mummy jokes and a wooden figure that was just fighting us. Well thanks for making me think a damned corpse is walking around. The explosive teen replied as he looked around them. Maybe the person this was made for just never got here to be buried. That is sad but way better than the alternative. Izuku looked up at the lantern. How is this still on? Maybe it's a special chemical. Katsuki offered. Should we take it? You want to steal a lantern from this place? The blonde asked flatly. Hey I was led here so as far as I know the goddess wanted this lantern. It is the only thing even noticeable here. I guess. Take it and let's get out of here. Yeah. Izuku nodded as he grabbed the lantern and turned to go. Let's go to my place since it is closer. Suddenly the door slammed shut and a sing of a lock was heard. What? Izuku exclaimed. Was that a trap? Katsuki brought both of his fists up into a guard, ignoring his phone being in his hand. Izuku had put his phone away when he went for the lantern earlier. The platform they were on shook and both teens hopped off of it to see the shaking just stop just as quickly. Are we locked in here? Izuku asked after a few seconds of silence. I can blast us out of here most likely. Katsuki sighed. At least we don't have your dumb mummy here also. Suddenly Katsuki was struck by an unseen force and sent to the ground. Katsuki Izuku shouted as he was struck himself and knocked onto his back, dropping his weapon and the lantern, which broke once it hit the ground. When the lantern hit the ground the pale light from inside blew out in a flash across the entire chamber and somehow stayed like that, illuminating everything in a sea green light and even somehow revealing the previously unseen force that had attacked the boys. Both teens saw it at the same time and both had horrified expressions. It was a corpse, a mummy, an actual zombie any of those things but it was definitely something that should have died long ago and should have stayed like that. The undead thing had on long rusted metal armor that covered its deteriorating flesh. The being was easily 20 centimeters taller than the teens. The thing's jaw long gone and a purple substance that was a darker shade and found on multiple spots of the thing. Its eyes having a purple substance in place of them and those unnatural eyes focused on Katsuki. The explosive blonde had a terrified expression as he looked up from his spot on the ground at the monster. Katsuki had never felt so small and weak before as he saw this thing that stood over him that gave off an energy of something that was just an abomination against nature. 
the undead being raised a large arm to bring down on the petrified blonde, who was too terrified to move, before it was struck from behind. The thing turned to see Izuku, who had broken one of his wooden swords with the strike over the shoulder of the thing. Get away from him Izuku gripped his broken weapon tightly. The teen was visibly terrified but he wasn't going to let it stop him from moving. The thing responded with a roaring sound before it promptly swung its fist into Izuku's side and the force sent the teen crashing into the side of the grave before it attempted to stomp on the stunned teen. That exact second lasted an eternity for Katsuki. It felt like time had stopped but his thinking was normal. All he was processing was what just happened. He had froze, and Izuku didn't. Izuku was now being attacked by a monster that was after Katsuki, who was too afraid to even try to defend himself. Katsuki was still leagues from being anywhere close to the hero Izuku was, and now Izuku was in danger again. Katsuki grit his teeth and large explosions rocketed off of his palms as he instantly blasted at the undead bastard. Go to hell bastard the explosive teen unleashed a large blast on the thing's disgusting head before it could hit Izuku. He unleashed a large area blast to send it flying away from the two as Katsuki helped Izuku up. Are you okay Izuku? I think I have some ribs that are still not broken. Izuku groaned. Two of them are definitely not okidoki. Well let's blast this to hell and get out of here. Katsuki scowled at the monster that had gotten up to face them. It hits hard and my breaking the sword over it barely broke the guy's arm. Yeah but I have explosion. How do we know it can even be killed? Izuku grabbed his unbroken weapon from the ground. Let's just find out through tests. Katsuki blasted at the undead. Thing and Izuku followed, keeping back to let Katsuki blast. On the thing with free reign, the emerald teen was studying. The thing as Katsuki dodged attacks and unleashed explosions on it in retaliation. Hem. Izuku breathed out as he tried to think. I want to just say the obvious blow off the head bit. I figured. Katsuki responded as he slammed a palm into the undead thing's face and let off a big explosion that made enough smoke for Izuku not to see what happened as a result. Did you get him? Izuku asked right before Katsuki was thrown out of the smoke directly at him, sending the two crashing to the ground. That just shrugged off his head being blown off. Katsuki groaned as he got up. His head is gone. Izuku coughed as he looked up to see the thing step out of the smoke and face them. Its head gone but a mess of the purple substance still in that spot. It just doesn't care about damage. Katsuki stared the thing down. I don't know what to do. Izuku accidentally set his foot against the lantern he had dropped earlier and looked down at it and got an idea. Katsuki I have a dumb idea. What is it? Katsuki was ready to blast the thing if it came at him, the thing slowly making its way to them. Izuku poked the broken wooden sword through the crack in the lantern and against the odd pale green flames. Kill it with weird fire. It makes sense. Get that stick burning and I can get you an opening. Katsuki jumped at the undead enemy and began to keep it busy. Come on hurry up. Izuku spoke to the piece of wood as he tried to give it more reason to set on fire. He felt like just throwing the lantern at the thing but that might not work and then he might not have the lantern anymore. Once the wood had flames going Izuku smiled and got up. Gripping the wood he ran at the monster. Katsuki I am ready. Got it Katsuki made a blast from his foot and kicked the thing in the to set it back a bit as Izuku jumped at it and swung his flaming weapon right at the weird purple substance that was being in the place of the thing's head. The flames actually igniting the thing instantly and causing the undead enemy to clutch at its burning part in what looked like pain only to have the green fire spread to the arms and soon the whole thing was on fire. Both teens had gotten away from the thing and had to watch as it burned away. The thing collapsing as the flames ate through the undead thing with speed. After a minute of silence as the two just stared at it in shock Izuku spoke. I don't think I am sleeping ever again. Neither am I Katsuki sighed as he leaned onto the grave. Holy shit we just fought an actual corpse. A reeling undead creep. The emerald team picked up the cracked lantern and looked at the unwavering flames in it. I am keeping this in case that ever happens again. He looked back at the now definitely dead thing before looking away. Is it possible to leave now or are we locked here? I am blowing that door to hell so we can get the out of here. Katsuki stated as he walked to the door with multiple explosions going off in his palms. Not even a full five minutes after that had the door been blasted off and the two teens admittedly ran all of the way out of the tomb and back into the woods and then back to Musutafu. Not feeling safe until they get a few streets away from the woods. I officially never want to go hiking again. Izuku took in a breath as the two finally stopped running. I agree. Katsuki nodded. At least I have this now I guess. Izuku held up the lantern. Why would your goddess want a damned lantern like that? Are there more dead people around that need the stupid fire to die? I hope that's not it. I don't want to fight zombies. Izuku really hoped the goddess wasn't going to make high. Fight undead things, if this was her doing things. Hey we made a kick-ass team though. Katsuki couldn't help but grin as they continued walking. Definitely. Kick that thing's ass. We definitely have to tell someone about that. A pro hero or someone who can make sure the place is now empty and not up to anything bad anymore. Definitely. Izuku saw that his hand was cut up. Most likely from when he shattered his one sword on the undead guy's shoulder. 
He realized he didn't bring either of the wooden swords with him but he didn't care. He thought about what happened in the tomb however and reached a thought he decided to voice. Hey I got a dramatic bro moment thing to say. It ruins it when you say that right before whatever you are going to say. Katsuki deadpan. We made a kick-ass team and we'll definitely make a kick-ass team again. And with everything that has happened I kinda think this is a good way to make the deal on this partnership. Izuku stuck out his left hand that was still bleeding slightly. Brothers, Katsuki looked as the hand and thought. He had frozen before in that place. Izuku's quirk for some reason led him to that place. It no doubt might make him do something like that again. Katsuki wouldn't let Izuku go do something like that alone if he had the chance and he would be damned if he froze in a situation like that ever again. He gave Izuku a dumb look as he grasped Izuku's Y hand with his own cut up hand. Of course, brothers, a humming sound was heard as suddenly Izuku's bracer. And the two just looked at it in confusion. Is it trying to make us do something else? The blonde asked. I hope not. Once was enough for the next year. The emerald teen got confused as he looked at the blue gem that was glowing more than usual again. He was about to press on the gem like before but it reacted on its own. A new sound of energy going off erupted from the piece of metal and began to glow orange before a dark orange line began to appear on the bracer, encircling it on the edge near his wrist all the way around. The energy humming stopped and the orange was still there. Glowing as brightly as the blue gem was, back in its normal state of glow when he had a stock like he does at the moment. What just happened? Katsuki asked as he looked at the orange addition to Izuku's bracer. An orb of glowing energy with black tracings on it appeared in Izuku's hand. The sudden appearance of the object startling him enough that he dropped it and it hit the ground with a soft thud. Ah Izuku yelped as he dropped it. What is that? Katsuki asked as the orb rolled to a stop in between them. I don't know it just popped up Izuku responded in confusion. Why how what? Don't ask me it's your weird quirk. Did I just level up? Izuku asked. A random orb of whatever drops out of your hand where it came from god knows where and you call it a level up. Katsuki gave the emerald teen an exasperated look. What would you call it? Random BS. What is this though? Izuku asked as he crouched down to grab the orb. The orange line on my bracer is dull now so maybe I can summon these. But does it do? Izuku felt a buzz in his hand, like a numbness that stemmed from the bracer, specifically where the orange line was. Maybe the buzzing was how he used it. Hey can you back up for a minute? He asked the blonde. Why? I'm gonna test something and I can deal with dying right now but you can't. I really don't feel like watching you die. Katsuki showed his dislike of the situation. I will get back up. Plus I doubt my thing here would really make a power that kills me. Your original power is something that saves you from dying once a day. Who says a deadly one isn't next? Just let me test it please. I swear if it is that bad I won't use it unless I gotta. Katsuki sighed. Something he was noticing he does a lot nowadays. Okay, let's see what that orb does. Izuku nodded and used the buzzing in his hand to guide him, making a small twitch of his fingers all at once. Then the orb blew up. Izuku was sent backwards away from the blast of energy and right into the side of a building. Katsuki had raised his arms to shield his eyes. What the hell? Katsuki responded to the event with confusion. Oh, Izuku groaned as he sat up in his position against the wall of the building. He felt the scratches on his arm and from the orb blowing up, as well as a bump on his head from landing in the fountain. His hand was the worst of it with his palm looking raw now and bits of beginning to pour out. That hurt. You just blew it up Katsuki exclaimed. How are you not dead? I have discount immortality. E but you are hurt and I thought that stuff goes away once you revive. I didn't die apparently. Izuku rubbed the bump on his head with his unhurt hand. I was holding the thing so I don't think one of those is enough to make me die. So you just make bombs now. Katsuki mumbled. Why? Izuku looked at the bracer and saw that the orange line was halfway bright, going around his wrist like it was filling up with the brightness of the energy. Huh. Does it have a smaller cool down? It seems so opposite of your discount immortality though. Why would you gain an orange bomb? I don't even know how I got it. Izuku replied as he watched the line fill up still. I guess I don't have to worry about making bombs anymore. That's your takeaway from this. Well yay. I now make bombs apparently. But why? Izuku shrugged and Katsuki gained an exasperated expression. Maybe I can ask All Might about it. Izuku mumbled as he got out of the fountain. All Might? Katsuki asked. Why him? Izuku blinked when he realized he had never mentioned being the student of All Might's before this to Katsuki over the past few days. I am can you keep a secret? We just fought a dead thing. This won't top that. The blonde answered. Wondering what the secret that has to do with All Might was. All Might is my teacher. Has been for the past 10 months. Izuku explained. Katsuki just had a blank look for about 10 seconds, which was interrupted by a sing sound from the bracer when the orange line had gone completely bright. A crimson-eyed teen gave out another sigh in the many that came with talking to his emerald friend. That somehow isn't as surprising as it should be. You already have so much weirdness that it just fits in honestly. I'm not weird Izuku defended himself. 
We just fought a dead thing honestly I wouldn't be surprised if you turned around and sprouted wings at some point. That would be cool. Izuku thought about it. The orange stuff made a sound. So can you make another orb? Katsuki asked. I think. The emerald teen tapped the orange line and nothing happened. He waited a second before he tapped it several more times. I don't know how to make one. Let's just call it and go home. The blonde stated. We just fought a dead thing and that was enough to last me till we go to UA. A dead thing excites you enough to last a week. Apparently, I doubt I am sleeping ever again so I am going to just stare at a well while waiting for this bruise on my side to disappear. Please go home and not do anything stupid. I am jumping off of my roof to get rid of my broken ribs. Izuku stated as they walked. I hate that. It sounds so bad but your quirk just makes that actually make sense. So how about tomorrow or whenever we get over what was probably a traumatic night want to see how my bombs work? Why are we so easily changing subjects off of that thing? I don't know. Maybe a type of adrenaline. Izuku picked up his lantern. Maybe our teen minds don't handle it that way. I think a teen brain would handle it bad and we are not normal. I have died exactly 80 times in a few minutes. That is more than the zombie. Yes but you are still intact. That thing had no jaw. The two went to silence for a moment while they made it to the apartment complex. I am going to call All Might once I get home to tell him what happened. Izuku said at that point. Maybe they can find out what really was wrong with the guy. It could have been a weird quirk that kept the guy somehow still alive and the heroes can make sure no trace is left for that to happen again. Let's honestly just leave that stuff to the professionals yay. Katsuki nodded. See you later Katsuki. Izuku pat his friend on the back as they parted ways after what they would later consider the first event in a line of many that would mark their paths to becoming true heroes. Izuku didn't really sleep well at all. It was a dreamless sleep and he still felt on edge from the time he spent in that tomb with Katsuki. Once the sun done coming up over the horizon Izuku was also up. He had to explain to his mother about the entire situation. All Might having told her about it just a bit ago over the phone while the tomb was being investigated by a few pro heroes. Inko wasn't thrilled at all about Izuku's decision to go into an old tomb that ended up having him fight a possessed corpse, but was at least glad Izuku managed to get out of it okay. At noon Izuku grabbed a small lunch and said goodbye before going down to the fountain to meet Katsuki. The blonde having got there just a minute before him. Katsuki had bandages on his arms and elsewhere where he had injuries from the night before. Hello. The emerald teen greeted his friend. Hey, feels too casual for what we experienced. The blonde replied. It does. But hey at least we now have some experience that can boost us with dealing with tough situations while heroes. Fighting a weird corpse is too much I think. Yeah. Izuku nodded while eating his sandwich. We definitely are ready for hero training. Three more days. Katsuki stated. Then we are there. Think I can get good with the bombs before that. I mean they seem simple enough. They aren't lethal, small and like a base. Maybe timing one with its blast you can propel yourself somewhere but I really don't recommend that. If anything just learn the timing and the range and you should be fine. So we should do that today. There really is no stopping you is there? Katsuki asked with a smile. We fight a corpse, you gain a new ability and immediately want to train with it after just sleeping for a few hours. Grind don't stop. Izuku replied. It sure doesn't. Let's not test those bombs here though. We can go to Dagaba Beach, the Emerald Teen suggested. After it got clean there is plenty of room there for training, even with people now going there. That works, just make sure we don't actually blow anyone up. I only blow myself up. Izuku joked, not the smartest thing honestly. I don't think so either. So All Might already had the place taken care of right? Katsuki asked about the tomb. Yep, he said that the zombie was definitely dead. Nothing else was in there last what we already found. I don't understand what that place was made for. That wooden thing's area felt like a training room, but then a grave right behind it. That just doesn't seem right. Especially with the grave having a zombie that fought us. What even set that thing off? Us opening the grave? The blonde asked. Izuku cupped his chin while thinking. MMMMM maybe the lantern. We didn't actually get attacked till I messed with it. And the fire in it let us see the zombie and it also killed him. So we woke it up by touching the lantern. Does that mean the lantern was there specifically to keep that thing from acting out? Man that means we only fought that thing because I messed with it. Izuku sighed. I don't want to think it is my fault. Katsuki shook his head and pointed at his friend's left arm. It's that thing's fault. It led you there. I still don't understand how this thing did that either. I think if we keep asking questions we will just end up with headaches and no answers. So me talking to the goddess. Izuku asked half jokingly. And half disappointed as he thought about how he still never got a real response from her. Katsuki snorted in laughter. Yep just like your goddess. Okay I am ready to blow stuff up now. Izuku hopped off of the edge of the fountain where he was sitting. Yep let's go. The blonde followed his friend. Once at the beach both boys found a man waiting for them. One that had Katsuki completely shot. Hello young lads. All Might said in his muscular form. All Meg HT. The blonde shouted a bit louder than he meant to. 
Hi All Might, Izuku said definitely more calmly than his friend. You are young Bekugo correct? The massive man asked as he looked at the teen. I am. Izuku told me you were there in that place this morning. Thank you for making sure you both came out of it alright. I know it couldn't have been easy seeing what you boys did. The man smiled as he said that. Grateful that Katsuki had Izuku's back. Now I believe you did say you had a new ability in your quirk. He looked at his emerald pupil. Yep, it's a bomb. Izuku showed his silver bracer and the new orange glowing addition to it. I don't know how to make one yet but I know I can. One popped up this morning when the orange first appeared. The teen tapped the orange glowing addition to his bracer. All Might leaned towards the bracer to get a better look. Um, it does seem odd that you gained an ability so different from the first I must say. I don't think things being normal would fit me to be honest. The emerald teen commented. That might be true. Tell me the circumstances of how you gained the bomb. The man figured he could gain an idea of the mechanics of Izuku's quirk, if it was indeed a quirk. After me and Katsuki left the dungeon we did a whole brother's moment and shook hands and said we would ave each other's backs in other situations like this. Then the bracer glowed and gained this thing. The man began to think, his face scrunching into a look of thought. If he had to say anything it was something he was guessing only because he knew it was a possibility due to having his own quirk and how he got it. I believe I have an idea Izuku. Really? Yes but the explanation has some sensitive details involved. He didn't want to even say the name of one for all yet in front of Katsuki. Izuku caught on and shook his hands. Katsuki won't spread anything. Spread what? All Might looked at his pupil who nodded to reassure his belief in his friend. Very well. Follow me lads to a place where we won't have the chance off if any unwanted listeners. A short bit later and Katsuki was sitting there with a look of shock and confusion as he absorbed the information he just learned. The truth of All Might's quirk and the man's true appearance. All Might having changed to it to reinforce the truth was a lot to take in. After a minute Katsuki spoke. This is definitely something. This morning took the cake on most surprising but of probably the month but this is a close second. It is a bit shocking. Izuku actually fainted. Don't tell people that Izuku turned red from embarrassment. It's endearing. The blonde man responded. It's embarrassing. So Katsuki had a question. Izuku is meant to get this one for all next then. It made sense with Izuku knowing about the secret and being the man's student, especially with All Might calling the kid by his first name. Indeed he is. Tashinori nodded. I did offer it to him almost ten months ago, but I asked for him to wait so I could do something to actually earn it. Izuku admitted, and I agreed to respect that. Actually Izuku had a look like he was thinking. I don't think I can take it at all at this point. What? Both Katsuki and Tashinori asked in surprise. Izuku raised his arms in defense. My power is weird and I don't think this is the final power I get. Plus that zombie and the fire and the bracer leading me to those makes me think that maybe the goddess has a path or something made for me anyways. One for all might not be best to give to me if I have all this other stuff to worry about. Tashinori nodded in understanding and put a hand on his student's shoulder. I understand your reasoning. Your path does have what seems to be some uniqueness to it that having an outside task to uphold might deter it. Either way Izuku I will lend help as your teacher to help you on your journey. The man gave a reassuring smile. Izuku felt happy that his teacher wasn't disappointed that Izuku ultimately turned down one for all and still would help him grow. The happiness was cut short as Izuku's bracer began to glow and make a humming sound just like it had hours ago. Everyone looked at it in confusion as the looked at the blue gem, which was previously dull from not having a stock, began to glow intensely again. Just like before the sound of energy going off erupted from the piece of metal like something was surging and the metal began to glow bright yellow as a new line. Just as yellow as the glow the bracer had gained, began to watch itself onto the bracer, encircling it just below the orange line. However this time it had three breaks so that it was three segmented parts of a circle. Once the sound of energy quieted down Izuku was the first to speak. Again, I don't even know how to use the first one. Your hand is actually glowing, Katsuki pointed out. Izuku looked and saw that his actual hand was glowing and the sound of a new energy was building up. Ah what's this he swung his arm like he was trying to shake the energy off, accidentally hitting the wall of the shed. Then the wall blasted open with force. It was like All Might decided to just punch the wall with his strength, a massive hole tearing through it and the force making the teen fall over and pushing the other two back as well. What the hell? Katsuki cursed while shielding his eyes from sand and debris. Good heavens All Might gaped, having tied to his muscular form to brace himself. Izuku was on the ground and just looked confused. Did I just gain super strength? Katsuki helped the other teen up. Dude you just demolished the wall without meaning to. Izuku just looked at the destroyed wall. So revival power from the goddess, a bomb and super strength now. Tashinori then had the truth see in his head, his earlier hypothesis correct. Izuku, your powers all have individual meanings. What? Izuku got confused. Katsuki then got the meaning too. Oh, Izuku then finally had the two new powers sources make sense in his head too. 
Wait there you guys the bomb I got when me and Katsuki had that bonding moment and the super strength was just now when you said you would still be my teacher despite me not accepting one for all. So they're based on bonds. Katsuki guessed. This morning made it clear we have one and this just now definitely did for All Might. I believe that is the case too. All Might was glad the kids came to the same conclusion as him. He did think the idea felt weird at first. So the revival is probably my bond with the goddess I guess. Izuku guessed. Wait so why are powers happening now? Katsuki asked. Wouldn't you have one like from your mom for years by now? Perhaps his power was building up energy to be able to function before it could do such a thing. It does seem like a complicated procedure. All Might then looked at the hole again. I do believe we should make sure no one is hurt from this. On it, Izuku hopped out of the new hole to check the area. I swear something new is gonna happen every day with him. Katsuki sighed. Izuku does indeed keep things interesting. All Might turned back to his non-muscular form. I don't think I will ever get used to that. The blonde teen commented. A second later Izuku jumped back into the shed. I'm back no one was hurt. I also noticed some things. What might that be? All Might asked. 1. I used that huge amount of strength with like no physical backlash. So I think the power has a built-in reinforcement part to my body. 2. I only used one part of the circle. He tapped the single dull yellow segment of the circle, which was slowly filling itself in at a rate that was slower than the bomb. So I think that this power has charges and not just a one-time use then a recharge. It's also been like 50 seconds and this thing is almost full so I wanna guess a single minute is what it needs. How do you even access a single power though? Katsuki asked. The resurrection seems like it is just an automatic thing that activates in the case of something that kills you. I believe I heard two different build-ups of energy is a coup. Perhaps each ability that is something you can manually activate without a situation can be called upon by reaching into yourself and grabbing the energy. Like how some quirks are activated. Katsuki nodded. I kinda do the same for explosion. Izuku nodded and took a breath as he tried to feel an energy in him. This being the first time he ever tried to do something like this and have a clue of what to look for. The boy then felt it, like different s of energy in him, one being orange and the other being yellow. I can feel them. He grasped the orange one first and felt a tingling feeling in his left hand and the instinct to shape his hand like he was holding something. Once he moved his hand he felt a, one of his bombs, immediately materialize itself into his hand. Hey you did it, Katsuki commented. I felt it and my hand felt like holding it before it was there. Maybe the power waits till I can hold it so it just doesn't drop and roll off. Is there a way to send the bomb back? Tashinori asked. Hum Izuku looked at the orange object in his hand and took a shot in the dark at unsummoning the bomb by trying to squeeze the thing. Somehow his first guess was right and it disappeared. The orange line on his bracers filling in instantly. Yeah, either it was me squeezing it or me thinking of getting rid of it. And it doesn't cost you the recharge time to send it back. The explosive blonde remarked, which is good honestly. Is your strength ability the same way? I imagine that for the strength it would be like releasing a punch and dropping it to probably turn off the power without using it. Izuku guessed as he tried to use the power, his left hand gaining the yellow glow like before as he had his hand in a fist. He moved the fist around for a second before opening his hand and releasing the power, his yellow glow leaving and the charge going back to its segment on the bracer. Now I know how to access them. Now all you have to do is get used to implementing them into your style. As much and I want you to take it easy before you a. Starts I think you should get used to your powers. Katsuki held up a hand. Focus on just one for now is what I think. The bombs might be a bit more to learn since it is different than punching hard. I can help with it since explosions are kind of my thing. I think the bombs too. The emerald teen agreed. I did get them first. Yep, let's get started. Katsuki said as he left the shed. Spending most of their afternoon on the beach training left the two teens exhausted. The two lying in the sand breathing heavily. Think you got the hang of it? Katsuki asked between breaths. I think. Izuku exhaled, popping a new bomb into existence to let roll down the beach. Watching it roll into a hole made from an earlier bomb's blast before he made this one go off. A quirk based on bonds. Katsuki said as he sat up. It sounds weird at first but you probably have one of the most powerful really man. The thing is limitless in what it can do. A new ability based on a bond with someone. I already have discount immortality, bombs and momentary steroids. That's a way to describe them for sure. If they're bonds, then why exactly is the goddesses reviving me from death? And how did I gain the bond with her anyways? Beats me. Maybe she did some goddess things to make it happen. I wonder why she was at the entrance exams. Katsuki scrunched his eyebrows as he thought. Maybe she planned on keeping a closer eye on you. Or is just screwing with me again. A weird way of doing it. Did she even give a different line or reaction when you died this morning? Honestly I kinda didn't pay attention this morning. Izuku gave a chuckle. My mind was too focused on the fire. Hello lads Tashinori called for their attention as he signaled his return to the beach. 
holding a bag that had food and drinks for the teens. I don't think you should do too much more before you can't even walk home. I lived on this beach for like the last 10 months pretty much. Izuku still hadn't sat up. What's one more night? And Ko asked for you to actually be home this week. And after this morning I don't think it would be wise to stay here. Izuku made a groan as he sat up. Yeah you're right. I don't want to upset mom. So I take you lads got Izuku used to the bombs. Yep. We also did the super strength one too for a bit. It is actually a one minute recharge for a segment. And only one segment charges at a time. It does limit you compared to me. The blonde man spoke as he handed Katsuki a bottle. Same with the bomb ability from Bakugo. It's still pretty useful to be able to dish out a strong ass hit if you need to. The blonde teen commented. Add in my weirdly good ability with a sword. Izuku nodded. You are good with a sword. Tashinori asked. Oh yeah, I kinda forgot to mention that part. During our grave visiting adventure I had a wooden sword and learned that I somehow just know how to use one. It came in handy. Katsuki added. Can I get a sword? Izuku asked his teacher. The man just looked at Izuku for a solid few seconds before speaking. I don't think I should be the adult you ask. Inko I think would have more say over that. So you're gonna carry a sword now? Katsuki looked at his friend. Yep, I am good with one so I am not gonna let that talent be wasted. After a few minutes of silence while they ate Katsuki spoke again to ask a question. So now that you aren't getting one for all at all now where is it going? Izuku looked at All Might. Where is it going? Most likely to another kid at UA. The thin man answered. Katsuki is another kid at UA. Izuku stated. No, Katsuki immediately shut that idea down. As much as it would be an honor to have that, I don't think I am a fit for it. He wasn't going to very say that he believes he doesn't deserve it at all. That is all right Bakugo. You will be a fine pro either way. So one of our classmates is going to be insanely strong. Izuku looked at his friend. That ought to be fun. The blonde replied. They still have nothing on how many kids things just follow you everywhere. I pride myself on it. Later that night upon his arrival home Izuku decided to first tell his mom about the developments with his power. So super strength. Inko repeated after hearing it and seeing the golden yellow line on Izuku's bracer. How are any of these related? She was still worried about him being able to just pop bombs into his hand from thin air. We kinda guessed it works on bonds. The dying and coming back ability is the goddesses. The bomb is Katsuki's and this strength is Yajai Sensei's. Inko smiled. It actually seems natural that you would have a power based on being close to others. I don't know the limit of it yet or even if it has limit, but the basics are kinda easy to learn. Each ability is gained after a moment where the bond is made stronger and it is kinda based on that person somehow. Each one also has varying levels of use and recharge time. The bomb is 10 seconds but the strength is minute, and the revival ability is a full 24 hours. Do you know what the fire has to do with this all yet? The emerald woman looked at the kitchen counter where Izuku's lantern with the odd flames was currently placed. That is a no. The fire is still odd. Izuku then asked the question he earlier asked All Might. Hey mom, can I get a sword? Inko had never turned as fast in her life to give her son a shocked expression. A what? A sword. Izuku repeated innocently. Why would you want a sword? I somehow am really talented with one. Plus it's not like I don't already make bombs and can punch a hole in a wall. Holding sharp metal isn't the worst thing I can do. Inko didn't react again for a second before sigh. It isn't the worst thing you could do but it is still dangerous Izu. I managed to use the wooden sword this morning like a pro. I still have issues with the fact that you fought what you described as a zombie. I also fought the wooden thing with it. Using a wooden sword isn't the same as an actual sword Izuku. Can it at least be considered? Inko took a second again and nodded. I will think about it I suppose. That's good enough for me. Izuku had a smile, right before his bracer began to glow, with a humming sound of energy following. Again, what's happening? Inko looked worried at first. New power. Izuku said as he watched the bracer's new lime green energy etch a complete circle around his bracer next to the yellow one. Nothing major happened though. Maybe it doesn't need a major bonding moment for you since you're my mom and we have already had lots of those. Inko looked at the new addition to her son's bracer. So it is something based on me. Maybe I have telekinesis. Izuku guessed as he looked at a cup and held his hand out to try to use telekinesis on it. A second later his hand and the bracer gained a lime green glow to it and the cup did as well, it floating towards him. Fool I do he tried to grab another cup to hold too and the first one immediately dropped, hitting the ground. Luckily it was a plastic cup so it didn't break. Okay so I can only hold one object at a time. I can really only bring small objects to me. Inko said as she watched he rain test his new power. The cup currently floating then dropped without Izuku meaning to let go and he looked at his arm. Oh the line is gone now. I guess I have a time limit. That was about 10 seconds. Inko stated. The recharge looks like it is the same. Izuku watched the line fill up with bright energy. So one object. 10 seconds of use and recharge. Can I lift people? Let's not try that right now. 
Right, I have to tell Katsuki this. Izuku left to get his phone from his jacket that he left near the front door. The day after the next Izuku and Katsuki met at the fountain again. It was also the day they would have their first class at UA. And they were meeting up beforehand. So telekinesis, Katsuki asked as they began to walk to UA. He did believe Izuku but did also want to see it. Yep, Izuku lifted a pebble in between them. I also found out that I in fact can't lift living things. How? A squirrel just a minute ago. Izuku admitted. I guess that is a way to test it. Oh I also got a name for the powers and stuff now. You do. Kinda. I mean the whole collection is kinda a right now. I don't know what the overall thing is gonna be named yet. But the powers themselves got names. I mean past their obvious names like bomb or telekinesis. I kinda call All Might's Tashinori's strength. Mom's ability could be called Inko's grasp. Let me guess mine. Hmm. Katsuki's blast. On the money. I coulda named it your bomb but that felt kinda lame. I mean it works. What's the goddesses called? Goddess's blessing. Izuku said like he was unsure. You didn't know what to go with. It might be weird to call it that. I think she has a name. Isn't naming the others after us a little weird too? I mean I get it. At least I have your guys' names. I don't think the goddess will even say a new line to you for a long time. I mean I hope she does so that things can get explained like the fire. But she seems to just not want to change up her dialogue. Izuku held up a finger. She did only once, right before I actually saw her in person. The entrance exams. Honestly a weird place to find her. I mean I don't seem normal do I? Izuku asked. I'm not gonna be a judge here when I join in on the stuff. Katsuki replied. Right. And now we can actually bring up the fact that somehow we have not slipped out over walking to UA. As students on the first day. Fighting a corpse makes enthusiasm and such be all over the place. Katsuki guessed why they weren't initially going nuts with excitement. It is definitely exciting though. Who do you think our teacher is? Probably some hardcore hero who will definitely work us into being responsible heroes. And people who don't go tomb raiding. We didn't know it was a tomb. Izuku defended himself. You still took the lantern. Yeah but I didn't blow up any doors. You blew up a ancient tomb. We needed that. Yeah we did. But you still caused damage to public property. I don't think that thing was public knowledge let alone property. If it was then the creep wouldn't have been camping out there. I don't think tourists would have stopped him from being in his own grave. But fire does. We shan't stop talking about that event before people hear us and question our sanity. Katsuki said as they got on the train that take them to UA. I don't think I have much to question. Izuku laughed. The two teens stopped right in front of the gates to UA and looked up at the building. Crap it really is hitting me that we are here now. Izuku remarked. It's an odd feeling. Like eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich but without the jelly. Katsuki looked at his friend with an odd look. That's how you describe this. I mean your reaction definitely makes you know what kind of weird I mean. Katsuki exhaled a laugh. You aren't wrong. Now let's go try to be normal kids the declared as he took the first step past the gate. Sounds too hard. The explosive blonde replied. Hey, I make the stupid jokes here. Izuku turned to Katsuki. Baby I want to turn with the jokes. Mom said it is my turn to be a smartass. The emerald teen replied as they entered the main building. When is it my turn? On the 3rd third of the month. So tomorrow. No tomorrow is the 4th or 5th. The math here is just blowing my mind. The blonde said. It's that advanced stuff. Either that or I hit my head too many times. Which is extremely likely. I will refrain from commenting on that. Izuku pointed forward towards a sign over a door. Hey look. Class 1A. That's us. The door is definitely big. Maybe our desks are big too. Izuku said as he grabbed the door to open it. I think they would make the desks be different sizes for everyone. Probably. Izuku opened the door and the two got a good look into the classroom before Izuku just froze up. She was there. Talking to a girl with sharp teeth and dark green hair was the goddess. Goddess. 